I'm not even logged in. Wait, I gotta go through the authentication. Oh wow! <laughs> so that I'm you... such a fucking boomer. Dude. Quick, guys! Everyone say really mean things about Deroya. He can't reply to yeah. you right now. Only on the oh, stream. Oh god! There's a Sonic ad. Help! Yeah. I can't even You've... see it. You've got your opportunity right now to get down to business and welcome stream. As you can see, we do indeed have a slightly uh, different roster than you might expect to judging by the stream title. We are in fact missing MMO inks <laughs> just for a little while. In fact, we have a double Brazil to kind of fill in for inks. So occasionally you'll actually see, uh, you know, you'll, you'll actually see uh, Brazil go ahead and, you know, pretend to be, you know, pretend to be Canadian. Although actually inks isn't actually Canadian. It's kind of the opposite of boots, right? They both swap places basically. Basically. But Brazil will be filling in for MMO Inks until he actually wakes up, which will probably happen uh, at some point. Maybe. I don't know. Like It could be like an hour from now. It could be three hours from now. We simply don't have that information. But And then it'll be a seamless transition. Yes. From inks, from, from yeah, yeah, it's going to be like, oh, it's going to be snappy, right? Like we, we're really prepared here for the stream, guys. Me and Brazil both have our Plenga mugs, right? I've got a Plenga Wicked mug. He has a regular Plenga mug and, you know, we're just ready for a great show that we really are. And a Plinga mouse pad. Yeah. That I, oh, oh. My, hold it back up again. It green screen the face out. Yeah, it know? is. It's quite scary, It's just right? like my mouse pad. You have yeah. an old yeah, Plinga mouse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's some good content there. It really is. Uh, you know, like the... Uh... <laughs> oh my God, that's terrible. <laughs> but anyway, welcome. You know, I think it would be remiss of me not to give a big warm welcome back to two members that were some serious regulars on the old tea time, which is of course Deroya, who has emerged from the the bowels of the internet, right? Uh, hidden for a very long time. Okay, legendary armor, uh, wow. and indeed, uh, you know, like the way the legendary armory, of course, and some news about Guild Wars Two, you know, sent him, you know, into his like top secret cave on the internet. But now he has emerged once again. Uh, to spread his views about the game. And of course, Boots, you know, Boots uh, having, you know, come here to actually get, you know, like his his dose of positivity because he's been spending a lot of time with wooden potatoes recently, which, you know, like I've seen those <laughs> latest videos. They're, they're a little bit, they're not exactly the happiest videos in the world. I think that would be a fair statement to make Boots, right? And, and Tea Time is such a well-known show for being positive Very and inspiring positive. and happy. So that's why he's here. So welcome both of you back to the show. Thank you. And also, I, I'd like to <laughs> extend a warm welcome to Mr. Potatoes into the into the club. Yeah. Because uh, now we're now we're all here. Now we're all gathered on the on the nay train. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not me. I'm still oh, wow. riding high. I'm okay, actually. Really, yeah. Sorry. I'm pos I'm positive about yeah. this too. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I actually want to. I, I want to start there. Like, because no context, <laughs> right? Okay. Just tell. Give me. Where are we thinking right now? Like, you know, where's the positivity level? Like, on a naught to ten? Like, where are we at? Ten. The, ten, ten. <laughs> okay, so Brazil is ten. Deroya, ten. where are you at? Like, what's what's the positivity score for Guild Wars Two and, and the future of the game? <laughs> uh, phew, that is a <clears throat> that is a hefty question. I don't. Uh, phew, um, yeah, I, phew, three. I don't know. <laughs> Four, five. I don't know. It's yeah. I'm excited for the expansion. Yeah, I, he, he I, said the future I mean, of the game, not the present I mean, of the game. I, let me yeah. Uh, let me okay. Let me let me put it another way. It's going completely according to plan. This is the the send off expansion that I always wanted. Wow, it's gonna be great. The send off expansion. <laughs> huh? Okay. All right. All right. All right. I mean, it's, I, I mean, that's yeah. The I end, think the I feel similarly right. to that, but I'm way more positive than you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I, I <clears throat> I don't know. It's it's hard for me to to condense all the feelings into a, a, a score, so to speak. Yeah. Um. I think it's it, I think it's more like I'm I'm very positive in the in the sense of where it's going, what's actually happening, and and whatnot. But like, I mean that that that's the end, right? That's it. That that's it. That's what we've all been waiting for. The the end of dragons. End of development. Uh, but then but then Guild Wars two. The, in space the end of Guild Wars two. Yeah. yeah the Guild end Wars of Guild Wars, Guild Wars three. Now Guild Wars two in space. I, I, yeah, I I feel like there's no surprises really. It's just it's just how it is, right? Wow. Okay. I mean that's that's the the <laughs> realist the realist take here from Deroya. And then finally, uh, Boots, where are you at? Like kind of a similar vein. Like you know, are we feeling good? Are we feeling bad? Like you know, what's the situation? Right with the with you know you. I want to see. I want to have scores for everyone. 
if we can get inks in, he's going to say like negative a 10. So we've got to get it. We've got to bump these <laughs> numbers up a little bit to balance it out. Right? The zero is already going in there as like a 10 out of 10. So that's bringing the average up. But like, where, where are you at, Boots, as well? Well, for the future of the game, I'm definitely looking forward to the expansion. So so for ex stuff coming up wise, I'm going to go with a seven or eight, maybe a nine, hopefully, for the expansion itself. Um, for present, you kind of look at like all the talent that must have been taken off of uh, Ice Brood Saga to be put towards the expansion, which makes me think the expansion is going to be pretty good. There wasn't much talent left on it, that's for sure. Oh, you, you know what? I've, now that we've got that little intro there, you know, just just for the record, guys, I'm feeling pretty positive, right? Got a little bit of hype going on here, a little, bit, a little bit of energy. I'm really positive. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah? I want to say, instead, I, of talent, like, instead of talent, I want to go with manpower. I feel right. like manpower <laughs> is the right word because there are still talented people on Ice Boot Saga. All right. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think this is a great place to start there because I, I would say that this is the, the biggest news that we've had. We've had a lot of news and we're going to get through all of it um, during the show here. But I think the biggest piece of news is that it is over. The Ice Brood Saga has finished, right? And by the way, just in case you didn't figure this one out, you know, by the stream title, there's going to be some spoilers here. So if you haven't played it, I mean, well, you know, on it, mute the stream for half an hour, play it, and then come back, and you'll be done, right? You'll be good to go uh, in that regard. But yeah, like the Iceberg Saga is over, Primordus, Big Dead, Jaw Mag, Big Dead, right? We're ready to go into the expansion right now. And I think it would be safe to say there has been some pretty big displeasure in the community regarding how um how this was actually handled from a law point of view from a story execution point of view uh, and also from a gameplay point of view which i think is going to be a little bit unwarranted i think the gameplay was actually rather decent with the dragon storm instance but overall a lot of people are very very mad um you know there's been you know there's been some video content about that right like a lot of reddit threads with a few hundred comments on there Arena has been catching a lot of stick for this in the fact that they dealt with these two great threats, right? Like very, very quickly within a very short instance and indeed within a very, very short cutscene. Now, I actually do have a slightly more, I suppose, pragmatic view on this. I mean, like from from the standpoint of someone who'd like be really like into the law, like, you know, a lot i can definitely understand this is a bit of a, a bit of an egregious offense here to dispatch two such legendary characters almost instantaneously but on the other hand i almost feel like a had no choice here right like they they had the, they know that they wanted to go to a new story with ender dragons right and and do this cantha storyline but they were also currently wrestling with this jaw mag and primors and they're like what do we even do here like do we follow this through into the expansion but we want to tell new stories there we don't want to continue the story that we've had in living story in the expansion so in a way they were like right okay this is going to be a little bit not not quite what we want and not what the players want we're just going to have to kill this right now okay and move on right like i mean what do you guys think about that like what's your <coughs> opinion on the execution uh of the story here I, you know i just think that it's not maybe not ideal but i think that you know there's not much more they really could have done given the you know given their development cycle what it turned into compared to what the iceberg saga originally was Boot should go first since he's limited on time. Yeah, okay. Uh, I got, I guess, complicated thoughts about this because <clears throat> so I, I play Guild Wars 1, but I never actually finished Eye of the North. So I don't have the same kind of connection to Primordus and Jormag that probably a lot of other Guild Wars 1 players have. Um, so to me, these two Elder Dragons are just another two of the Elder Dragons in the world of Tyria. And uh, and no, no, no more important than other Elder Dragons. Obviously, Elder Dragons are extremely important in the world of Tyria, so killing them off really quickly anyway is kind of kind of lame. Um, but but they're no more important to me than Mordermoth was, Zaitan was, and Bubbles is going to be. So and and uh, Kalkatoric as well. So, but I kind of feel like I'm in the same kind of headspace as maybe the writers are currently for Guild Wars Two in that. I am also kind of I don't I, I can't put this on them, but I, I am I am sick of fighting elder dragons all the time. So I, I kind of appreciate that now we might be moving on to other stories soon. Um uh, but but yeah, it kind of felt though that in in Ice Brood Saga, this story should have been 
very focused on these two dragons if we're killing them off, but they were definitely side characters in the story. And it seemed like the Rays were trying to make, um, because of the fact, like at the beginning, they said the two dragons can't fight each other directly. They have to do it through some sort of prism, some sort of, uh, it ended up being the two champions. They were going to try to make Bram and uh, Ryland the main characters of the story, but they also kind of felt like side characters. And on top of that, I don't know if it's like an MMO thing in general, but I feel like there is no main character in Guild Wars 2 anymore. Everybody feels kind of like a side character. Um, and I feel like that might be the case for a lot of games, a lot of MMOs. But uh, We have but... Timey. Timey. <laughs> the true protagonist of Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Yeah, like the, 100%. But am I wrong, though, that in like even though you're the commander, maybe it's because you're the commander and it's just so like a deferential of a role and you're just sort of a given in every situation. Like you don't really feel like a main character anymore. You just feel like sort of along for the ride a lot of the time. I think this is a lot more obvious in the Icebrook yeah. saga, right? Because they they wanted to pack in this like pretty massive story into a format where they were going to end up with less development resources right like you know I, I think this has actually been an issue throughout the living story i actually think you're right um boots i think you know for example like it was kind of like almost like a joke that the developers forgot who rocks was right like there was just zero development on this character for a very very long period of time right like they just didn't have enough game time to actually develop everyone and then you end up with a lot of these very underdeveloped characters i think that's been one of the major criticisms not just of the ice brood saga but probably of the living story in general as a whole throughout the history of the game. Uh, and that's why, you know, I, I, in a way I'm inclined to agree. With you. I think it's, you know, kill all those dragons, end of dragons, like Bubbles dies in the first cut scene, right? Like a giant, like, I don't know, uh, jade dragon eats him. It's not a dragon though, okay? It's like a, a jade worm just eats him. Boom, we're done. Move on. Because I think a lot of the more interesting stories that have been told in Guild Wars 2 have actually been side characters, right? You know, like Joko, uh, the White Mantle, and all that kind of stuff, in a way was a little bit more compelling than a lot of the, oh yeah, there's a there's a dragon literally the size of an open world zone, and he's going to kill everyone, right? Oh, wow. And also, if you I kill think, him, everyone explodes. So I think that in Cantha, probably, uh, End of Dragons is going to be a very real thing, because... Uh, because I think that the main story in the expansion is going to be about dealing with the deep sea dragon and killing the deep sea dragon in the expansion, but they'll be setting up more interesting plot lines uh, throughout that story to be told in the living world afterwards about you know maybe the uh, the the ministry the the imperials the different factions and all that. Um, so I think we will be getting the end of dragons in the expansion, and then moving forward from there, we'll be able to tell different, more interesting stories. I can imagine for a uh, very casual player who hasn't really followed the story all that much, um, <clears throat> this would actually feel like the end of dragons, right? Because in reality, the deep sea dragon has been mentioned twice throughout the entirety of the game's history by any characters. Like, I yeah, mean, this, yeah. I, it, in reality, a casual player would see this as like, oh, okay, that was, that was all the dragons. Good, goodbye, <laughs> I guess. I mean, it, yeah, I, I, obviously we know that there is a seventh hidden dragon that no one's ever really seen or heard from or anything, but yeah, it, it, it just feels odd. It just feels odd. And I just wanted to say that out loud. It, it does feel odd. And I, you know, I, I want to just, you know, really get into this here as well. But like, I would say that the thing that struck me as maybe not necessarily the worst part, but certainly something that felt incredibly absent about the story was that I was expecting like we're going to get some kind of teaser, right? There's going to be not even, not like a trailer for EOD, but like a little hinty cinematic thingy, right? Or some kind but of I mean, follow-up, okay. right? Let's, but there was none, yeah, right? There really was like weird. zero follow-up. There, yeah. there was like yeah. nothing at the end, right? I'm going was... to I'm I'm give it, I'm going to give that one to, to the uh, arena net team, honestly, because in reality, the whole reason why this whole last episode was delayed and pulled out to like a nine month stretch is obviously because they do not have the time to develop the the expansion in a in a proper Ooh. time frame or Ooh. for the end of this the expansion no, no, no. <clears throat> or do you I mean, mean iceberg they, saga well both in in reality the thing All is right. like the right. the iceberg saga the final episode the the entire uh last uh, episode has been uh slowly released 
uh, with a two month cadence or whatever, all the different chapters. And it's taken nine or whatever, 10 months to get all of it out. Yeah. Obviously that was intentional for them to stretch the community's uh, attention span. And at the end, it's like, yeah, obviously they're not going to have something ready. And yeah, they, I mean, I, I don't, I don't fault them, but that's, I feel like that's just the reality of it. Do you think I, they, they should have, I, I think they should have stopped. I, I did not expect story. anything. I didn't expect anything to come at the end of this. Everything feels wow. so rushed. They should, they should have stopped the story whenever, <laughs> well, they should have, they should have probably never started Ice Brood Saga because the I mean yeah the whole launch I don't even know where to start with this. It, like, it's, it's it's so obvious that that what happened was they had a great idea and then the stakeholders were like, "All right, but you're not making money." Well, I think what, what I don't think it was a great idea. It? I think I I don't I don't even I wouldn't say that. I and think so it was an experiment. Gonna... I think I th the way I see it from what happened during that time and what happened afterwards is, and I kind of said it also a long time ago that this is what I thought was happening. And it seems to be possibly proven right, is that it was an experiment by the new game director to try to live without an expansion for a while and try to make something that's expansion worthy um, and generate enough money from that to just continue doing that same thing from then on and not have the uh the expansion hype low hype low kind of thing that we've always had in the past but i think that several months into it after the first or second release the powers on high said this is not good enough uh even though it looks like you might be able to uh do decent quality content for the first couple of patches uh, and probably go on from there. We're not getting enough money from it. Uh, we're just kind of doing the same old, same old. We're not seeing that. We're not seeing the boost that we intended to see. So we are going to go back to making expansions. Um, and so yeah. And then that, that's when they had to cut their staff down on Ice Boot Saga. The quality went down a little bit, or just the scope went down a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think the quality went down. I don't think yeah. that was ever there. Whoa! I, I thought you were a ten, dude. Okay. <laughs> I am but, a ten. Yeah. Do you like, do, oh, do, do, a ten does not mean like, I'm fully a ten. Harder, yeah. uh, For, no, I'm I'm yeah, staying yeah, that fully okay. from being a ten. Don't we know a little bit more about this though? Actually, I, I mean, I I think what Boots says there is is broadly accurate, but I don't think this was necessarily an experiment. This was kind of like the plan, right? This this was. Well, well, it's the plan, but it was a plan that was an experiment. Well, but I'm not, an experiment I'm not sure if it was like a full on experiment, I, though, because like the, the idea was, OK, right, we're going to be focusing a little bit less on Guild Wars 2. So we're going to change the format. Right. <laughs> this is what triggered like the massive drama. And of course, the Deroya incident. Right. A, a long time ago. Right. Um, it, <laughs> Are you still talking about that? Right now, it is um. It, moment. It, it is uh, a, it, no, it, no, no. Seriously, <laughs> like Anoraga, I I put Deroya as as an example there because obviously he's here and I'm jesting a little bit, you know. But I actually think that this um like the the knowledge that Arena essentially kind of had the game like oh yeah we're not really like tryharding this game you know, we're we're working on our other our unreleased mm. June game or our unreleased canoeing game right like that's um I think that was actually a really big moment for a lot of players like with their kind of confidence and. And, oh, yeah, you know, and apathy towards the company, game. right? Oh. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so no, I, I think that was a big moment. And what what happened is that Irene, like, well, yeah, we know we don't really have the resources for an expansion anymore. So yeah, we're gonna try something different. And yeah, it was an experiment, but like, it wasn't. It wasn't like, oh yeah, we're randomly not gonna do expansions. It's we aren't really oh, so fully dedicated a, to the game. Yeah, it, it was saying it was a necessity because they yeah, had so many people. Yeah, I, I think it was a necessity because they were doing other games. And now that now that that's changed. It's no longer necessity. Now they're back on the game hardcore. And th this is why we've seen this change in direction. And, and ultimately, the change in direction, in my opinion, is why the Ice Brood Saga kind of ended up as it did, particularly with the story execution. I, I can almost guarantee you that the original plan for Ice Brood Saga was to probably run two or three of these to handle Jawmag, right? So instead of doing it for like one year, which is approximately what we got, like a little bit over a year, they'd be doing it for like two years. They'd do two or three seasons of Ice Brood Saga, and then the finale of which would then, maybe only two actually, and then the finale of which would be getting rid of a Primordus and Jawmag in a slightly more spectacular fashion. But the thing is, it was like, oh, 
yeah, by the way, hello, writers. You can't do that anymore because we're doing an expansion in one year's time. So you better, you mm. guys better wrap that shit up real quick, yeah? Uh, and then it's like, oh, right. I see. Oh, oh, yeah. And by the way, you've only got the interns as well to design your gameplay, right? And that's harsh, T Fair. Like, I, I'm, I'm saying that facetiously, that is, yeah, that is harsh. right? Okay, you I, know I'm, that is not yeah, I'm, I'm being facetious oh. there, but you know, you, you get the point, right? They had very limited yeah. development resources to actually. Uh, to actually finish this stuff uh, and to, to get it implemented within the game. And all things, ca this is my like ultimate hot take, actually. I, I have an inferno take for the Ice Brood Saga, uh, which, which I actually think that, you know, given the circumstances, it's really not that bad. Uh, and I think there's actually some incredibly promising ideas there like i really want to get the royal's take though on the overall story there because me and boots have been going at it here and i def i i definitely want to hear the deroya take so before we move on to the next topic here lay it on us i mean we 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 all know how well that uh, star wars series ended for uh uh D &D, but, um... <laughs> oh right that was canceled damn oh you mean it ended? Yeah, they were fired. Oh, the Star oh. Wars, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> this was the best story yeah. patch the game has ever had. I'm just gonna say that. I'm not lying. <laughs> of all time, why? the best patch ever. I okay, yes. I, I, I think before I, mean, I even I'm say gonna, anything else, I gotta get going before I hear why. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> He's, he's gonna live in his happy space. I'm gonna just, <laughs> yeah. just gonna turtle, yeah. He's gonna be safe. Yeah, in he's the sand. safe. Oh no, dude, you, dude, you're leaving me one v two here, boots. I'm in trouble, bro. I'm in trouble, have fun, dude. Have fun, Tifa. Hey, um, oh, don't worry. Yeah. Inks will join you in a second. Oh no, that's gonna be one v three. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Only knowing that Brazil thinks that thinks that things are bright and rosy. That's yeah. that's all. I got. Yeah. Yeah. Just leave on a positive note. There we go. <laughs> all right. See you guys later. Oh fun. my god. Hey, see you later. And big thanks for coming on. Oh, well, he's already gone. Never mind. Okay, but yeah, let's uh, let's continue uh, there, there as well. Obviously, big thanks to Boots there. He actually didn't originally think he even had time uh, to remain being on the show, uh, but he actually squeezed in uh, a few minutes for us here as well. So yeah, big clap there for Boots. But he is now gone, leaving us without him. I'll leave for the time being, but uh, do you want to expand on that uh, perspective a little bit, uh, Deroya, regarding the story uh, and the execution yeah. and perhaps the saga um, in general? I'll, I'll, I'll give my perspective on the story because I, mean, I love that uh, a lot of people have been focusing on Primordis being their biggest letdown from this this whole build up and whatnot. I completely empathize with that. For me, the the thing that I've been most excited about throughout the entire game's lifespan has been the uh, the Ice Dragon. Um, and I was so excited when the Ice Brood Saga was actually announced. Um, and I loved the first couple of episodes. Everything was great and the, the, the dark, gloomy uh, uh, atmosphere. And it, it was actually kicking off really well. I really liked it. And then all of a sudden, they took all character building and then they just kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, stumped it under a boot and, uh, and forgot about it. Um, and uh, the whole... Uh, mischievous, uh, cunning, intelligent dragon suddenly decides to just jump in and be like, "Yeah, you know what? This, uh, this, this, uh, this twin of mine. I, I know we've existed alongside each other for millennia, and uh, there's been no issue. But uh, now's the time to to go go smooch him. Um, and then then they destroyed it, it all in in a second without any real." Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it was it was like, all right. I I just sat there and I was like, honestly, when when I first saw it, I was sitting there just kind of blank in my mind, thinking, I'm so glad I'm not really emotionally invested in this story, because it, it didn't hit any nerve. Honestly, it it hit no nerve, but I could definitely see myself two years ago, just being crushed by this. But I left my PC. I went to bed early, and I was like, "All right, that was a that was an evening." Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was what it was. Wow. I think it was. I think it was good. Um, because I think the people who were holding out and were like, "Oh no, the story's good. Like the story's actually good." Like brazil you've been talking shit about guild wars 2 writing and story for so long like fuck you it's actually good they all know that that's not true now oh no <laughs> and like if you really think about it hard enough the story has always been like this 
and it's been like this for years. The only difference, like this, this unironically, like this patch did take like 30 minutes to play the whole patch. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. That is true, actually. But all of the other patches also took like 30 minutes to play. You just had to run around in the open world and do heart quests for like two hours in between the 30 minutes of content. And like people will look at this and they'll realize, oh, it's been like this all along. Like it's always been like, it, it's like the writers were like Godzilla versus Kong is a cool movie. What if we just make Jormag tear open its mouth and shoot a laser beam down Primordius's throat? And like, that's, that's the whole, that's, that's the whole patch. Like Bram and Ritlock hit each other for a while. Not Ritlock, whatever the other fucking Ryland. It's terrible. Like it's the worst. It, it's, it's awful writing. It's terrible, but it's, up to par with the rest of the guild wars 2 story and i think it's yeah, good that people yeah. finally see oh we don't have to care about the story anymore because the people that care about the story they're gonna like it whatever like let the people who like the guild wars 2 story enjoy the story just let them have it that's their content if you like raids or if you like doing other stuff story is not for you you should like don't even worry about it. Just get it out of your head. I think people will finally have that separation now. And like, that's why it's like a big 10 for me because I think finally people's eyes have been ripped open a little bit and they, they, they have to, you cannot look at, it is like, it seems feasibly like impossible for someone to look at this patch and think it was a good story update. And to say that, like, it was inconsistent with the rest of the writing. Like, it was perfectly consistent and it's all been terrible for a really long time. I, well, I mean... I think I, you actually express it really well with the, the whole separation. Because that's exactly yeah. how I, I feel about it. It's it, it's finally I've kind of put those two things aside. And I can really... I, I can just enjoy the game for, for what it is. Not what I, what I think the story is trying to do or trying to put this on a pedestal because because it's like yeah it's just yeah it, it, it just is what it is but the yep. game is great i mean there's some cool stuff and i'm excited for ender dragons but it's yeah the, the you know, living story is just not doing uh, anything for me i i think this is I, I think this is more of a criticism of the living story right rather than the actual expansions because i would argue that the story in the core game heart of thorns and path of fire were actually pretty well executed and some of the stories in living world were pretty well done for example, I think the, the Joko storyline, although tragically cut off far too soon, uh, was, I think it was fun. It was a fun storyline, right? You, you, it was a little bit edgy, right? Like, I, I remember at the time, I was very surprised. They were like, dude, they were like people getting eaten alive by scarabs from the inside out, right? He's like oh, making yeah. jokes at you. He's like making fun of you like the entire time, right? He's like basically semi-breaking the fourth wall. Now, I know that some people don't like that stuff, but I love that stuff. I think, you know, a little bit more lighthearted, not super serious is... It, I think I think it makes sense, particularly when you know the game is going to be be a bit contrived, right? Like, and this episode, I think what people really didn't like about it, or rather the finale of the Ice Brood Saga, is that it felt like ultra contrived. Like, I think what Deroy was touching on there with like, oh yeah, you know, like Jormag has a huge brain, by the way, but then falls perfectly into our trap after like, and also like, like yeah. It, it did seem that like a lot of the build-up just went nowhere, right? Like, you know, oh, Jormag is manipulating Aureen. Oh, I guess not, actually. Never mind, right? Oh, Jormag has a giant, massive intellect. Oh, oh I guess not, actually, right? Like, oh, yeah, you know, they're a big dum-dum, uh, apparently, just, like, blew themselves up. I mean, I don't know. It, it's, um, it, it definitely does feel, it does kind of take all the, kind of all the oomph out of, like, oh, yeah, these dragons are so crazy powerful right now, right? And then, oh, yeah. They, it, I, I, I honestly think that the Guild Wars 2 writing team is actually trolling, okay? Because they had a very good opportunity there to, like, kill Brian, right? Just, like, he, you know, he's done. He's out of here, right? Done okay, it. he's done, right? And I know he's not. He's not a very popular character either, right? He's like, oh yeah, it's it's Braham. He's oh, he's so edgy and moody and dark, right? And then Arena was like, you know what? Actually, he, we're gonna we're gonna leave him there, right? Like he's he's in the down state, right? He's on the ground, right? It's very reminiscent, actually. When I saw this, I, it reminded me a lot of the Guild Wars one scene, right? With uh, with Prince Rook. I was like, holy shit. He's been Prince Rooked, man. Like, he's about to get his head cut off by a dwarf. But no, that didn't happen. We just got him out of the snow, right? We got him out of the snow, and boom, right? He's good to go. Not like a, not a scratch on him, right? Like, you know, there's no problem there. Well, I guess that's not true. And we get to 
kill Ryan. That was that was kind of cool, I guess. Right? That was that was a uh, that was like you know at least at least someone died, right? Because uh, I think yeah, I, I actually like, like yeah, that. Yeah. The- I think the the only character throughout that whole the, the entirety of uh, Ice Boot Saga that kind of had a a great character arc was Ryland. Like he w- went from completely unknown to being this uh, this follower of the bad guy to actually becoming the bad guy, and then we defeat him and he dies at the end. Like it's a, it's a complete it's a full circle. Everything was it, it was great. Um, that was actually really well done for mm. Ryland. Everything else was every other character. It was great uh, the way the uh, Boots said it earlier. Every other character feels like a side character. Mm. Uh, it's so true. It's yeah. so true. It it certainly you know like the the big thing that I get from the Ice Bridge Saga is that they wanted to, they had more. They wanted to do more with it um, in particular, right? Like you know you have a lot a lot of these characters that could have all been very very interesting in and of themselves, but they just kind of didn't really fully end up fleshing them out like fleshing out a lot of these stories and as a result of that it does it does cheapen it a little bit and i can i can really understand why a lot of people would be would be upset about it uh you know at at the end of the day it's kind of like okay right that's done ice brood saga now but you know this is something that wooden potato said actually that you know i I thought was a very good point um is that you know like all of this law is kind of like closed off now to an extent right because it's finished right so it's going to get swept under the rug like a lot of stuff with the dwarves right and like the underground like you know like the depths of Tyria stuff that's kind of irrelevant now right like that is you know all right that's behind us let's go and let's go and look at some samurais and watch some anime right like that's basically what what arena is saying here and i think that for a lot of players who i think a lot of players who played guild wars one particularly eye of the north are gonna be like ooh ow you know that's a bit of an oofy right there like that's unfortunate because you know obviously factions is great and i think factions is one of the most loved expansions um in you know uh, in guild wars 2 a uh, guild wars 1 rather uh, i think a lot of players yeah. would have would have liked to have seen a lot of the central tyria stuff explored a little bit more and that is now the odds of that happening are significantly lower i think right or or, or none at this point of seeing that happen but I don't think that necessarily like means that the story quality is going to go go down because I mean I think I think the community would broadly agree and I, would you guys agree with this actually like that the Path of Fire story in particular was pretty well executed maybe a little rush no. towards the end but no you would you wouldn't no. no I think it was terrible yeah. <laughs> I actually li- really liked it I, I was thinking just the other day I just um, want to be clear I don't think it. any of the story in Guild Wars two has ever been good yeah. <laughs> but I like I That's just want to also yield that like the Guild Wars 2 story content is clearly not for me. I just want to say that. Like, I want to say both of those things. Like, I don't think it's ever been good. So, like, if you if you like it, probably don't even listen to me talk about it. But, like, if you're on the fence, like, maybe think what I have to say has value in it. But, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I actually, I, I was thinking the other day, like, what was the what was the, the highest moment for me in, in all of Guild Wars 2? And it was probably uh, Path of Fire. I, I really liked everything about the release of that expansion. It was it was great. It was really well done. Uh, it was a uh, uh, yeah. I really liked it. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying it was like super eight tier story uh, telling, but for Guild Wars two, it was a it was a really good uh, it was a really good experience um, all the way through, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so yeah, that was that was probably my my highest point in Guild Wars two. I know oh. that wasn't a question, but yeah. yeah. I'm kind of expecting that from from EOD as well. I mean, like, I mean, I, I want to get into the expansion a little bit later, but I'm really expecting to like, y- yeah, no, I mean, I I think that um I think they've been working on it for maybe a little bit longer than 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 we would expect, or they've had an idea about it. Like, I'm I'm expecting them to like really go hard on this and like try and knock it out of the park because I think that if they don't, it's pretty pretty yikes, you know. They, yeah. they, you know, they, yeah, they, well, this is they they got to they got to swing hard here, you know. I feel like they're kind of setting, I don't know, uh, maybe it's just leaving a bad taste in my mouth at the end here of the Ice Boot Saga and whatnot, but I know they can deliver on great expansions, but I just, I don't, I don't know. I think there's also this, this, um, uh, this, this factor involved with the hype around uh, End of Dragons is that, like, I keep thinking what, what actually comes after, like, what is, what is going to be the meaning of ender dragons because it feels like it's it's the end of the game which i'm fine with like a send-off expansion is exactly what i want like it would be it would be it would be awesome i agree um, like kind of round up the game and 
uh, put it in uh, in maintenance mode from there on, and then uh, do another game because obviously that is that's what Arena wants to do. Well, um, they ain't they ain't done. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, will there be another expansion? That's a very interesting question. Like, um, but will, will there they... even be another living? Story? At this point, oh. I think they're if they're gonna if they're gonna do anything with Guild Wars two at this point, I think like I think I don't even know how the pitch to like the money people for Icebrood Saga went. Like I can just imagine like someone walking into a room wearing like jeans and a Guild Wars 2 t-shirt with a briefcase, like trying to prove that they were different and opening it up saying, Hey guys, we got this. Arena net is going to revolutionize the MMO this time for real. And then like the money people just like shaking their heads, just like, no. And they like, I don't know. Like, I I think basically at this point they're probably locked into if they want to keep the game running, they have to keep making expansions because expansions are probably the only thing financially that are profitable that like makes sense aside from the gym store because they bring in a bunch of new people at once, all the people buy stuff, all the people play for a while because there's a lot of stuff to do all at once. And so like that's probably like what they have to do if they want to keep maintaining Guild Wars but 2. Like but like, if we look at it from like an investor's point of view, just just as a thought experiment, um, wouldn't it just be a sink like investing in a sinking ship? And I'm not saying that ArenaNet is a sinking ship. I'm saying that uh, investing in a nine-year-old game, uh, a company that only has one IP really to hold hold them float afloat, wouldn't that be? Like, I, I feel like that's not the be best pitch. I feel like that <laughs> that's. I guess they would be much better no, off the in the future to, to work say, on, on something something entirely new and, and secure the future of Arena. The correct pitch is to say, like, hey, guys, like, the console video game, like, PC crossover industry has been really great. And, like, we have a lot of experience making an MMO. Think of what we could do. We've made two MMOs. Like, we understand the infrastructure. And they should just make some kind of, like, big casual Guild Wars 3, play it on the Xbox. Because, yeah. like... I've actually been getting into Guild Wars 1 um, for the past little bit. And, like, I've been playing through Eye of the North. I've been playing through Factions. And, like, I wouldn't say that I'm, like, totally in love with that game or anything. But I think it's fun and it's very different. And it's very clear that, like, the people that were at ArenaNet making Guild Wars 1 are not at ArenaNet anymore. That is so apparent, like, if you play the two games. Um, but, like also like something else like the combat like oh my gosh like you run into mobs like if you don't like carefully select which pack of mobs you're gonna kill in guild wars one you're gonna get farmed over and over like the downstate penalty is incredibly like punishing there's so much like there are a million skills to pick from and like there's a lot of just like shit you can do um but like in guild wars 2 like a lot of that's dumbed down a lot of its combined like skills are dependent on weapons and shit. Um, it's, I think when it, I, I guess they just tried to make the game more casual overall, and I think they should just make something even more casual. It's just kind of like brain AFK that you can play with your friends on Xbox if you have a PC and whatever. I think that'd probably be the move. Uh, I mean, also, I'm, 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 oh, I have to say hmm. this while I'm thinking about it. I have hmm. to say this. All right, let's go. The anniversary scythe and soul taker in guild wars one is a literally what reaper should have been in guild wars two because you pay health to do tons of cleave damage and if you don't manage like your upkeep and stuff you just end up killing yourself but like if you manage all of that or you have a healer you just like you'll just shred mobs to pieces it's so cool like oh my god why isn't that in guild wars two why isn't soul taker or soul leader like it's called soul taker in that but why why don't we have a great sort of trait to pay health it's because the game is more casual and we can't punish the players, I guess. I don't know. No, it, it's so. a it's a funny thing there, actually. Like, um, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, there are a few things that I want to talk about. Like, one, I, I have to say, I threw something that was said in chat there, actually. Like, someone said that Anet has always been terrible at taking risks. I mean, I, I actually really disagree with that. I, I think yeah, everything about yeah. everything about cool. Guild Wars 2 has it been like, insanely risky. Yeah, like, it, it's insanely risky. Like, Living World was an insane gamble, didn't pay off. 
like making other video games, right? Like making their June game, their own that title, like burning a lot of money on that. That was an insane risk. Just didn't pay off. And it takes risks all the time. It just doesn't really work. Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, and, and, and if they uh, take a risk that pays off, they don't keep going with it. They take another. Yeah, risk. Like, I mean, this is like the the big thing here, actually. Like that. Yeah, I mean, like that. That's an that is a that's an entire other like can of worms right there for sure. But like with, with regards to like the Guild Wars One, Guild Wars Two thing, I mean. I, I think that they the the original design of Guild Wars One was certainly like very very expansive, and like the the game the game has like a, a bit of like a knowledge barrier to get into it, and I think they wanted to remove that. They want they wanted Guild Wars Two to be not a what you know as such, just how good you are at playing the game. It's kind of their goal with it, I think. And uh, and in that regard, I think Guild Wars Two is is pretty pretty hardcore actually. Like, and I think Guild Wars Two is not. It was supposed to be casual friendly, but it was also supposed to be a little bit of everything to everyone in that regard, right? Like, I think Guild Wars 2 was supposed to be pretty damn hardcore. Like, if you look at the original dungeon, if you look at the original open world, stuff kind of just one-shots you there. Like, imagine core specs, right? You don't have, like, a billion ages to have perma-prop, perma-quickness, perma-everything in the game, right? You're not just going to get, like, you're just going to get one-shot by a lot of this stuff in open world and and stuff in dungeons, right? I mean, like, you know, can you imagine, like, a, a you know, a casual player trying to do, like, Lupicus like, and trying to dodge, like, the loopy kick, right? You're not going to have a good time there, right? I, I don't think that's actually entirely accurate um judging on like how the original core game was actually designed right like you know i i actually like make this comparison a lot and i, I would really hold to it i think that the guild wars 2 is strikingly the core game that is is strikingly similar to wow classic where the game just punishes you right like brutally for not understanding what you're supposed to do and not having an understanding of mechanics right oh you don't know to use reflects on this boss i guess you're dead right oh and you didn't dodge that attack. You're a one shot, by the way. Uh, like I, I don't know. Like I don't think that's that's a particularly fair characterization of the game, actually. Um, and I I think um, Guild Wars Two does have a bit of flair. And funnily enough, actually, I would have agreed with you, Brazil, um, well, in during Living World Three and Four. But I actually don't agree during I, during Ice Brood Saga. And this could potentially be a little bit ominous, kind of like on the whole of End of Dragons M development thing. But I think with Ice Brood Saga, right, we have actually seen some like really big changes from arena in how they're approaching managing their community and also managing the content right i mean like if you had told me that we would get like instanced world bosses that you could play through with your guild anytime that is actually like a hard mode of a world boss or well okay that's stretching it a little bit it's not actually that different okay, it's got more hp it does more damage but you know like you know what i mean right like if you told me that like two years ago I don't like laugh at you, right? Like, you know, you're, 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 you know, I would have thought this is like a like a joke leak that you'd see on Reddit, right? Like if we, you know, if it was gonna be like, oh, they've added replayable story, by the way, in the form of dragon response missions, right? The, oh, they've added strikes, right? Which is kind of like replayable story bosses that reuse assets, right? Like they have actually listened and implemented almost exactly what everyone wants. In, in my opinion, with Ice Bridge Saga, right? Like, the execution isn't there, right? And yeah, sure, the, the kind of the quality, right? the, the level of polish that we're used to from, from ArenaNet, from the previous content they've made, isn't there. But from a design standpoint and from an idea standpoint, I almost feel like ArenaNet has, has, has addressed so many of the issues, particularly surrounding replayability, um, in the game, like reusing story content and even difficulty settings, right? Like, you know, these DRMs have CMs, right? Like the yeah. open world maps potentially have CMs. Like these are really, really good ideas. And like w what you did touch on th uh, there with regards to the fact that Arena doesn't follow up, this is the thing that like does keep me up at night. Like in my opinion, they have now solved the problem, right? They know the aunt, they know the method, right? The question is, will they implement that forwards? is the big yeah. question for me. Uh, if they do, I and guys, imagine this. Imagine if um, End of Dragons, it, you've got like eight bosses from the story or something like that. I think that's not, you know, that's that's probably about what you get. Eight bosses of some, you know, like story bosses. Imagine if that's eight strike missions on launch, right? Maybe with like a, a, a challenge mode as well or something like that. Maybe if, you know, and also all the story, the, some of the story, some of the story is like a drm right like a little mini dungeon almost right like more reminiscent of guild wars one right? again you know it's funny you bring up guild wars one right because i would argue that dragon response missions are semi reminiscent of guild wars one oh, missions yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah um yeah, to I an agree. extent there as well right um so imagine if story 
is like that and it's got this currency this reward structure attached to it with achievements right and uh, and skins to unlock and currency to farm and gold to farm by doing this like if the x-pack drops that and then on top of that not every boss because i actually I, I actually agree with this like uh, um when, when i said that wow imagine if every boss you could run as an instance i think that actually would potentially compromise like the open world a little bit which arena definitely don't want to do but if there are, there are like two open world bosses as well right that have you know an instance version that's like proper like rock hard we're talking triple trouble level of cm difficulty or taquadal level of difficulty within this instance version with new mechanics new monsters right like new challenges there like if they drop that with the same ideas, to be clear, guys, what I'm getting at here is that the good thing about this and, and why I'm praising Iceberg Saga is because that's the same idea, right? We, they have demonst Arena has demonstrated that they understand the issue with a lot of the content they produce. And if they actually implement those fixes into the expansion, then the, the difference even to HOT would be shocking, right? Because HOT did suffer from this to an extent, right? Yeah, you had these new maps, but you didn't really have anything outside of that until raids came a little bit later, right? With like the the um, replayability of the content. It was just open world maps, right? And look, those are so much fun that DeRoy was doing it. Like, you know, he was doing it like on five maps at the same time, like holding participation so he can get his achievements, right? I mean, that, I mean he, was having, like, he was having a great time there. Um, but... It could be so much more than that if they implemented these like relatively simple fixes that they seem to have now understood. So I think there's actually a lot of promise. I think there's a lot of reason to look at Ice Brood Saga and go and understand the context of the saga. Right? Understand that, yeah, like the th this was a bit scuffed, right? I don't think anyone would disagree with that. But you can look at the context and go, yeah, but they had to stop doing that and make an expansion because otherwise the Koreans are going to come, right? And, you know, with their briefcases. Uh, and they're going to be very angry, right? They're not going to be happy at all um, with this, right? Uh, and they were say, okay, so they had to completely say, right, we can't finish our saga properly, do the expansion, right? And then if you look at that in context, I think it, it, it one, it makes sense why it is this way. And two, you can appreciate the design perspective, not necessarily the execution. From an execution point, yeah, 100%, I can understand being frustrated, particularly if you're a story player, right? Like if you are a player who is invested in the lore and, and you know, if you were like, oh man, I'm really excited to see what happens with Primordis, right? Like, you know, he's just going to get, sorry there, <laughs> sorry there, buddy, right? You know, you, know, you didn't have a good time. Like he's like, he, I mean, how much screen time did Primordis have? I mean, this is actually round two. Like this is something that yeah. I, not a lot of people remember this, guys. Do you guys remember when Primordis got dealt with in one, cutscene by firing like a timey laser at him like earlier on in like mm -hmm. one of the previous seasons right he, he, he's been here before right like he's he, already he done this Balthazar's yeah. dogs in a volcano and then yeah. shot a laser to yeah. <laughs> it's already over but People um think the story yeah. has only been bad for one patch are you fucking kidding me holy shit god but that, that wow. okay without being overly harsh i would actually kind of agree with i would well, no, no, not kind of i would definitely agree with brazil here like this is not the first time something absurdly contrived no, has happened in the not. guild wars 2 story right it happens like, every patch <laughs> yeah i mean i, I actually I, I don't know like do you guys every know story yeah. no 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 every story patch this is how every story patch happens and i've said this before there's a big problem someone tells the commander there's a big problem and time he has an answer that's every fucking story patch that's every story patch. It's, it certainly the, was the, for a while. The actual content that you're doing is you're just doing what Timey tells you to do because Timey was the commander all along. Oh, that's a plot twist right there. But you have some stuff that Damn, also yeah. you said that I had to, I have to challenge you on. Oh yeah, let's, yeah, hundred percent. So you said that like, I partially agree with what you said about saying that like Guild Wars 2 is casual and you were saying actually it's hardcore. So like you brought up, there were, Someone brought something up in the chat, the cave troll and AC, which is a good example. It's a random boss that happens and it will fuck you up if you don't know what to do with it. And then people figured out, instead of figuring out how to handle this boss, we can make it fight this other boss and they'll kill each other. You just pull it into Kohler and they fight each other and then you win. Mm. And then people figured out, we don't actually have to fight either of them. We can just run and get the scepter pieces. And so it's like, in with... With Lupicus and his kick and his laser beams and his reflect, people didn't figure out, oh, we should just be reflecting the projectile. People didn't figure that out for years. People figured out, oh, we can clear all the mobs in the arena before Lupicus 
and we can pull Lupicus to the waypoint and we can death zerg him over and over and that's how we'll kill Lupicus. And then they figured out we can just range him and ignore the mechanics. And then people figured out like the perfect way to ignore the, the mechanics, which is just one shot. I think Arena designed the game to be like familiar from like difficult in a familiar way but they didn't think people would come in and just figure out how to abuse everything and they didn't think people would figure out about berserker's armor and berserker's armor was probably way better than they thought it would be and i think they just missed the mark with who their audience was in like three different ways and that like flipped the game on its head but i think now like what you've said with like drms and going forward i think they have successfully and it makes me wonder how intentional this has been over the past few years. I think they have reduced the player base down, possibly intentionally, to people that just want skins and to farm achievements and don't care about doing any kind of group or hardcore content and just want like a little bit of story to play in between grinding achievements. And people who want to hang out in a Discord server and talk to each other while they do something moderately challenging... I think they have like narrowed down the scope of the game to those two groups and those groups are perfectly symbiotic with, with each other because you have people that like have infinite gold because they play the game and they're good at market manipulation and investing and so they buy cool skins out of black lion chests with all the, the shit that they've earned in game over years and then that makes the casuals who don't do that just spend money on the game because they want the starry glowy cape. I think they've figured out the ultimate symbiosis for MMOs. And I think now they're in a position where they can just push forward with what they've been doing. And like, that's partially why I think the future for the expansion will probably be good. I think now arena net has like intentionally like gutted their player base to the point where they can focus on it and like move forward and not keep spitballing and trying random but shit. And they can just, they can just do it now. Wait, so focus on, on what exactly? On casuals who want skins and people who want to hang out and just do moderately difficult content together and like So talk. when you're saying so when you're saying it's gonna be good, you mean there's gonna be a lot of skins and yep. there's gonna be moderately really difficult good. content for people to yeah. do while they hang out. I think you're bang on like right right on the I'm on the money there. Right. Yeah. I've been I mean, right that, about that, everything that, so yeah, far. Because uh, I mean we, we've been yelling for hardcore content for years and years and years. And the, hardcore the content is not the answer. Is this. Oh, yeah, hardcore yeah, yeah, no, content I, is bad. I don't believe, I don't believe we'll really ever see that. I think this is, this is stat, status quo as, uh, as it'll go, go forward. Like we, they, it won't yeah. get any harder. It's just going to be moderately engaging for the, for the median level player. I mean, they, yeah, it's people, it's people still, figured out like raids. I think I'm going to say this. I think raids were a mistake and raids were a bad idea. And I think if they just made strike missions to begin with, it would have saved a lot of turmoil and strife and people hating each other. Because now the cool thing that I see when I go in the LFG and see strike missions is there are groups that like, they want you to ping 2000 legendary insights to join the <laughs> fucking strike missions. And then underneath that, there will be like three groups that ironically say, 10 million fractal essences in full legendary armor to join this and you join it and it's just a bunch of like fun casuals just hanging out and doing strike missions and that's good like guild wars 2 is at its worst when you have people that think the game is hard and that like everything is stressful and we're all on edge and we need to really focus guys we got to do this raid and it's just hard enough to where like if you fuck up a couple of times and don't have like two or three people to hard carry the group, everyone just gets mad at each other and then they blame it on pugs. They blame it on each other and the guild falls apart and everyone quits. I think strike missions are perfect. And like thinking back to all of this, like raids just kind of seem like a bad idea knowing that we could have had DRMs and strike missions the whole time, because I think those are, I think those are actually good. I think those the, are the perfect balance and what we what we need. What, on and, the topic and, of uh, perfectly balanced uh, mediocre uh, hardcore content or mediocre uh, challenging content, um, I can say as a as a now casual player, I actually really enjoy the it being so accessible for everyone because it makes it very very easy for me to 
to play at any given time without really having anyone to to properly need to rely on to do the hardcore shit. It, it makes it so that any casual player can just jump in at any time and do whatever the fuck they want. And I, I for I one, it. feel like it. feel like that is a that is a, a great uh, great thing for me in my my life right now. I, know, I, I, I mean, it's like yeah, yeah it, it, I, I feel like I've finally found the the lifestyle that fits with oh Guild Wars Two, and it's just I mean, he's a yeah, casual. It's sweet. Yeah, oh, yeah. Same. He's enjoying the casual, and, it, and it's great. Honestly, you should try it. We both figured it. it out. It's fucking amazing. It makes the game so much more. Just I, I never feel like there's nothing I, uh, I don't have time for because everything's like yeah, it, it kind of fits every in there and here and there. It's like yeah, I don't really have to dedicate my life to doing mediocre tasks all the time. And yeah, yeah. they're all oh. eating whatever. I just want to give it like I want to tell everyone this. And Inks is ready. Inks is fully awake now. Oh, really? The, the Elder Dragon oh, has been awoken. Oh, oh the Kraken awakes. Very nice. He's here. <laughs> but, Round two. Things are about yeah. to get crazy, guys. Real life is fucking cool. And if you have the opportunity yeah. to do real life, you should go do real life and play Guild Wars 2 casually. And it will be amazing. It's, it's great. Being a casual gamer, like, Wow. 21 year old me if i ever said being a casual gamer is the answer i would have literally hit that 20 like 28 year old me in the face or just said you're an idiot but whatever yeah, also, on, 28 on, the topic, year old me, on the topic of being being casual i i have to i have to vent for a second oh here. shit oh, oh here this is, is the perfect time to vent <laughs> he's fully he's here he's here guys oh, Wait, I'm gonna say before <laughs> the elder dragon himself starts uh starts exploding all over the place uh, with his ice gunk. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I, I have a, a, a bit of a, a thing to, to vent about. Because I, I cannot believe. Like, I feel like I could not be more casual in this game without completely quitting. And yet, <laughs> there are so many people complaining about how this final uh, cape or whatever the fuck is completely inaccessible to them. Because they do not have a thousand itrite ingots. And I'm sitting here with like four thousand, thinking, "The fuck have you been doing this entire time?" Yeah, I've been like deleting I them. Put, I like, just like sell them. I vend them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, what the? Fuck? Yeah. What? Well, everything's I, I, everything's so hyper uh, accessible. It's it's laughable that people are missing out and sitting here at the end of it, thinking, "Oh my god, I do not have whatever X thing." Huh. Everything is so easy to get, guys. It really, really is. I I want to respond to everything that was said there because there, there was a lot there and I don't agree with all of it. Uh, and I, I am the debate lord, right? And I, I must debate. <laughs> hey, it's um, okay to be wrong, Teapot. Yeah, There's no it, it is. That. It's true, right? And yeah, and I will now I will now explain why it's okay for you to be wrong, Brazil, okay? And well, you're, you're not exactly wrong, actually. Uh, I, I do actually agree that strikes are a better fit for Guild Wars 2, but why are they a better fit? It's, it's because it's more accessible, right? Um, and look... I, I, we, by the way, guys, we're not doing the easy mode debate because I want to actually talk about other things today. So I'm just going to cut that. I'm just going to kill that right here, right? We're not doing that. But like easy the, mode the, the real thing here is, is that Arena like just didn't add difficulty settings, right? Like is the reason why raids were fucked is because they were way too hard for most people. And, you know, in, in my opinion, this actually like really goes into um what you were talking about with Guild Wars 1, in my opinion, Brazil, right? Like, for example, um if you if you go into, say, Domain of Anguish, and you try and do that with like heroes, right? Or no, sorry, with henchmen, right? That's going to be an incredibly fucking brutal time, right? You, you're going to get, or... yeah, that's not going to go well for you. But the thing is, is that in my opinion, you, you're talking about how how like players broke Guild Wars Two with like the, the you know the the pathing loopy, right? Like reflect, yeah. luring the boss. In my opinion, Guild Wars Two actually suffered from this in an even more extreme way. Like Guild Wars One PVE was utterly broken and still is. Right, like the players have utterly shattered the game to the point where the meta game is essentially a role involves around literally going invulnerable, gathering up the mobs, and then one shotting them. Right, like that is that is how you correctly play Guild Wars Two to an uh, Guild Wars One to an extent. I would actually say that ArenaNet's biggest failure has always been giving. It, 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 I, and I say this with with big irony here, actually. Like it's that they give the player an 
unprecedented amount of freedom, right? And you are right. They did try and rein that in a little bit in Guild Wars 2, but they expanded the combat system out so much that, oh yeah, like now you have the option to dodge past mobs or stealth past mobs. In Guild Wars 1, that literally was not an option, yeah. right? If a it mob casts... Yeah, it if a mob not. like like hits you with a fireball right the fireball will like follow you around a fucking corner right and then like hit you anyway right you can't dodge it you can't do it there's nothing you can do to prevent that really um as such it's going to hit you unless you go invulnerable which well is exactly what you end up doing so i i still think that you know i do think that they did intend guild wars 2 to have like a very wide and broad audience and ultimately i think they made kind of the same mistake and just like giving the player too much agency right it because the player has so much agency in this game that, that it actually turns out that skill is incredibly important right like you know the skill is a massive factor and that's why you have such a, a difficulty with raids and, and even with strikes which is what deroya was pointing out there right look bone skinner is borderline impossible if you don't understand how healing works in the game like bone skinner is impossible if you can't react to his aoe's coming down right you cannot do it like it will just one shot you every single time and that's why people struggle with this stuff because there are some people who just like have are not very good at guild wars 2 and guild wars 2 is not a game that you can just kind of say ah you know what right <laughs> no i can just afk through this right like you know you know i know we meme about the game being easy which it is but it's only easy because we know how the game works right for players who don't understand how the game works it is impossible right to complete this which is why i think um, Arena's mistake wasn't not making raids. I think raids are a fine implementation. It's just that they are way too hard for the majority of the community. Like, way too hard. And every other MMO has figured this out, right? Like, WoW does this. Final Fantasy does this, right? Um, like, ESO has this as well, right? Like, they all have essentially different versions of the same content that are more accessible because Deroya is completely right. Brazil is completely right. If your game mode is not accessible, it is game over. Like we are in 2021. This is the year of AFK Arena and mobile games, right? Like if your yeah, game is not accessible, so. your game is like dead it. in the water, right? Like it is dead in the water. There is You're going nowhere, which is why strikes and DRMs are probably a little bit more um successful right? and why they're experimenting with essentially difficulty things that's this is literally what they're doing right is like is changing how difficult things are because they they finally realize that it turns out that some players don't care about being good at your video game like back in the day you know when, you know younger version of brazil the idea of like not caring about being good at a video game right would have been that alien right Holy exactly shit. yeah because we're a bunch of sweaty motherfuckers right you know like yeah. you know what i mean but but nowadays you know you've got to understand that like gaming is so mainstream that 99% of the player base just don't give a shit, right? And that's, by the way, perfectly valid, right? Like, it probably, as Brazil says, it's probably even more fun uh, than, than what we do, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. And seriously, guys, like, if you don't care about being good at the game, like, Veil vale Garden is a challenge every single week, right? Like, as opposed to being like, oh, well, I guess I'll do Veil vale Guardian again, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, the boss is dead in 10 seconds. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. Oh, that's unfortunate. But, um, yeah, that's the thing I, I would talk about there. Oh, God. Wait, wait what did what did DeRoy say? I wanted to respond to something DeRoy said. Now I've forgotten. There's uh, too I'm much to go, say. I got to go I do was something complaining real fast. About, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to respond to all the people in, in chat saying oh. that they delete your chilies or oh. I tried ingots or whatever the fuck that you're deleting. If you're deleting the uh, the currency of the season, you haven't been following along with the game. Yeah. For, it's, I, mean, I mean, are you blind? Honestly? That's true. No, no, I like, do agree with that. Like, yeah, every you, single yeah. season finale ends up having a huge cost of all the season materials included. And you're like, yeah, I'm just going to delete that. It's your own fucking fault, dude. Mm. <laughs> I mean, what am I mean? Yeah. You know, no, no, I completely agree. Right. Like, it, you know, it's, uh, you know, if, if you, if you don't, if you look, if you look at something like Aurora, right. Or vision, right. You know, you should have been stockpiling these, cur these currencies the entire time. Like we know how this one goes guys. Right. And we, we they're doing it again, right. They're literally doing well. well. We'll get into this later when we talk about like kind of the roadmap stuff. But before we get into that, welcome the sleeper has awakened yeah. and like i mean guys seriously i, I just want to say as guys like mmo inc so he is a wild card he might be about to just completely go psycho go berserk he's got his revenant t-shirt on right now like the legend of mmo inks is here and this this I'm, I'm i'm just telling you guys to kind of just kind of like you know fasten your seatbelts because inks he might be about to go crazy right yeah welcome to showings uh thank you can you guys hear me 
Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah great. So uh, I agree with what you guys are saying, and the game definitely needs to be the content in general needs to be accessible to a good deal of the players. However, the game also needs people like Mighty Teapot uh, and SC and Droyer and, and Brazil. They need these players who are able to do content that is unaccessible by most people or by most of the player base and be able to share that on Twitch, especially Twitch because it's the premier platform for sharing games, uh, regardless of what Bill Maher thinks. He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but, you, but you need that because when a new raid comes out, you need those groups of players uh, displaying that high tier content. And the proof is in the pudding because when Teapot streams that stuff, 3,000 um, viewers. 3,000 people, which is an insane number for Guild Wars 2. Maybe not for most games or all games, but for Guild Wars 2, 3,000 viewers is an insane number. Uh, bigger than what even Guild Wars 2's official, you know, uh, Twitch cast draws in. So that stuff is important. And on top of that, you have people like Mighty Teapot. I'm, I'm blowing a little smoke up your ass, Teapot. Oh, wow. But um, oh, nice. you have people like Mighty Teapot who are arranging these tournaments of highly skilled Guild Wars 2 players. And I know a lot of you in chat are going to laugh at highly skilled Guild Wars 2 players. <laughs> but regardless, the highly skilled Guild Wars 2 players out there who do understand how the game works, um, you need that kind of attention and draw to your game, to any game that that is really being played. You know what I mean? Um, you need that. You need that fan service, mm. and I don't understand exactly why they're unable or incapable of doing these things, making DRMs and making um, what is what is the other one called? The strike missions, strike, strike missions. missions, and and then just give up on raids. I don't really under, and don't get me wrong. I, you know, we're not going to talk about easy mode and all that kind of stuff, but that stuff should, should certainly exist. It should have existed from day one, but you also need that really high level of ceiling content that people can stream and compete against each other in time of completion and all that kind of stuff. And the game continues to unfortunately fall flat on not being able to deliver that stuff. I, I, and that's kind of what I think they're trying the to new, fix with new, Iceberg Saga, right? In a way. The new one coming uh, EP and it's just going to be the legendary armory. Oh, ah, and this going okay. off that, nothing else. I am liking that segue, Deroya. And yes, it's been a while. I mean, this is yeah, this might no, end up right? being a pretty long ass show here uh, for a while. But yeah, let's actually talk about what's happening because. We've talked about the story now, talked a little bit about Icebrood Saga just as a whole conceptually. But. Oh, wait, something... we did get the. Inks is, uh, Inks is rating. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Before we get into that, Inks, at the start of the stream, because, you know, we, we got like a positivity rating from everyone here uh, in the stream. Doro was, I believe, a three. Brazil, a ten. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where were... <laughs> where... <laughs> three and ten. I love it. What was Boots? Boots? Was like seven, I think. Yeah. Boots was seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I expect that from Boots. Yeah. What is Teapot? You're ten. Yeah, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't say ten. I'm, I'm like eight, eight or nine, eight or nine. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna fair. say ten. Yeah, I'm not gonna fair. say that. Yeah, like where, where uh, are you I'm at? Droyer. I'm at a two or three. Yeah. I'm way, way down. Um, I guess, I guess we'll discuss why as we go forward. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'm at like a two or three. So, let's talk about something because I actually got memed super hard for this because. I kind of talked about on, on patch day, I uploaded a video to YouTube uh, where I just, you know, from, yeah, from the stream basically. And I, people thought they didn't watch the video, right? As usual. And so they thought <laughs> I was talking about the story, right? Uh, but the thing is, I didn't actually mention the story at all, right? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? That was good. I did not know this. That's uh, quality. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> like, uh, I was just talking about the post they made, basically like the roadmap, 
that they ended up spamming out really, really hard. And they, they made this like massive like roadmap, which was in my opinion, like absolutely insane, right? It was crazy, right? What they actually confirmed there, right? And that's what we're going to talk about right now, because in my opinion, this was the actually like insanely exciting thing that dropped with the patch, not even the patch, like the patch, fine, whatever, right? Like, you know, people are going to be big mad, right? You know, they're going to rage about that. But now, screw that. Let's talk about the epic roadmap and like a lot of very interesting things. Now, I'm not going to lie, okay? It is worth noting, guys, that the first major thing on that roadmap was, you know, it was the balance patch, guys, the skills patch. Listen, I, I don't want to hear any laughing, okay? Like, no laughing yet, but look, I would describe that as bit of a fail, right? Not good, right? I believe, you know, the, the, uh, the height, the, there were, there were two and a half thousand people waiting and all they did was like move, the, <laughs> waiting for them to nerf, uh, like nerf warrior, but also buff it at the same time, right? That, that was actually like what, what two and a half thousand people were waiting for, right? And then also they were waiting for 25% attack speed increase on elementalist scepter auto attack, right? Like, wow. Wait, where, nice. Where, where's the right. two and a half thousand coming from? Was everyone waiting on the day or what? what oh yeah, they were, they were actually, t yeah. I, I, I was hyping up the, I like, I was doing Anet's job, like being their hype man. I was like hyping them up like crazy, right? You know, I was like, ah, just, you know, going right, big, okay. right? Everyone was like so hyped up. Yeah, there were two and a half thousand people waiting for the patch notes on stream. I was in bed. I was just waiting. I don't know. I just read, read it in the next morning. Yeah, but anyway, still a thousand people. Not great, okay? But you know they did say they're gonna do more, so we can recover. Here. But <laughs> looking at the looking at the rest of the roadmap, right? We've got ooh, okay. We've got legendary armory. So Deroya has to do like a legendary armor deletion stream where he deletes six out of nine of yes. his sets, right? Okay. We're talking. Wait, do you, you have runes on all of them as well, right? Yeah. Oh. You have full legendary runes on nine <laughs> sets nine of characters. Yeah. So I've got like 46 or whatever, uh, 50 something, I don't know, uh, <laughs> legendary uh, sigil or runes, sorry. That's uh, yeah. insane. I can, <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can delete all of them. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. And that I'd... was the day that I decided to go casual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was. Like, I, legit, it was. <laughs> When they were like, yeah, no, everything you worked for is going to be invalidated. And also, we probably are not intending on doing anything of the sort in, in the future. Uh, let's just let's just uh, make the bar be as, uh, as low as possible. And uh, uh, yeah, um, goodbye. I mean, I hope, they that was, that was, I mean, I hope there's an I, achievement. I just, right? I just, I just <laughs> couldn't. Oh, yeah. like, I was like, yeah. Twice, eh, thrice whatever. told legend. Yeah, thrice. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Thrice. Yeah, I, I honestly, I hope so there is an achievement. Like, that's crazy, right? I mean, the the only thing that they can do to really <laughs> redeem is uh, give me a title called Purple in Every Hole. Oh! Yeah, oh, 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 I love it. Uh, yeah, when they I, were I, developing I Legendary Armory, um, they were looking at their statistics. Or their, their um, what do they call it? Uh... They were looking at the numbers and they're like, everybody in the game is going to love this, except for this one player, this Royer, Ryan, whatever. <laughs> ah, it's only one player. Fuck that it's guy. It's one guy. He, I, he's just a rando asset, right? So it doesn't matter either way. Yeah. You know? It's like, not, I mean, not, 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 as well. <laughs> but no, so like, uh, you know, looking at the roadmap as a whole, I think there's a lot to be excited for there, right? Like, you know, they're bringing out the legendary armory. They're adding new achievements and giving away a free legendary trinket to support that, right? There's going to be like a big announcement and probably a release date confirmation on the 27th of July, right? We've got Tour of Legends coming on down the road, loads of bonus weeks. Like, I think that's actually super cool. I think that Arena's doing a great job there in keeping the players kind of ticking over and entertained while we wait um, for the expansion. But I, th I think like the big thing here to talk about is definitely... The legendary armory because we got some more news about this as well because everyone <laughs> bet against me i was there You're simping for anet i was simping anet all day saying no arena net will not monetize legendary armor it's going to be a straight up convenience increase to the game oh. quality of life ever involved and they will not I can actually, monetize it i i can definitely okay. see a situation in and which, i was right they've um, confirmed it it's no, it, you where right. it's not monetized but the thing that is monetized is gen 3 legendaries because they already have that voucher right for the precursor wait you think they'd sell it in the jet you think they'd sell that 
Yes, I legitimately oh. believe they could sell that. <laughs> wow. How how else could you pitch the idea of a Gen 3 set of legendary? Let me tell you why. Do you know what, do you know what dude? I have got this, uh, you know what? I have refined my debate style and finishing moves to the point where I can immediately destroy everyone in this debate. Do you know why? Okay, they don't need to monetize anything to do with legendaries ever. Okay, are you guys ready? It's yeah, because yeah, you can buy gold in this game and the average player earns like five gold an hour, right? Deroya, he is a rich man, right? He has thou he has billions of gold probably, right? Like he's probably richer Deroya. than Cassiano, okay? It's even more than that. The Chuck man. But you here's the thing. You defeated your own argument earlier. Yeah. I actually got uh, the uh, pristine uh, uh, dragon dryer. Holy shit. Nice. You, yeah, that you, was that's the Chief, first time in a already, long time I've been. You uh, already lucky. beat this argument. You when you said the Koreans are coming with their briefcases earlier, <laughs> when they said, "Bro, oh, we don't need to monetize legendary armor." Do you know how many fucking windows broke and ropes came in <laughs> and briefcases came through? Like, you're you're so wrong. No, but the thing is, no, I I would. What I'm arguing yeah. here is that it already is like super, like, dude, that, that, that already, you know, that happened on launch. That was on the launch of the game, dude. It's already happened. Because think about it, like, the average player cannot even get, like, one legendary. Like, do you not see these posts on the Reddit saying, oh, yeah, yeah. dude, I played the game for eight years and I finally made a precursor or I finally made a legendary, right? It's because this is completely inaccessible to most players. Like, it's literally impossible, which, by the way, is why it's a really brilliant idea um, for ArenaNet to give away a free legendary amulet. Like, it's, like, a really good idea to do that, to, like, get people hooked on the idea of this, like, end game progression. But, look, legendaries, guys, are already monetized. Because you need like 2k you, gold. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. It ain't gonna be free. It is gonna be free. It the, is the, not the, going no, to be free. They're no. going to give you the the whole thing like we usually get it, and you're going to have to craft the final thing using oh. your gold, the hard Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, no. You'll, have to, you'll have to. It's not gonna be anything free. free. It's just gonna be a free a achievement. Time. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I was talking about the the armory being free, right? And the you know, like oh, I mean, right, the armory. Okay, yeah, yeah. Not, not the tree. The, the, yeah, yeah. The, the skeleton, the skeleton yeah. to the armory will be free, but expanding it will cost. Wait, wait. Do, wait I'm, I'm really curious. You need to, you'll, you have to buy, you you'll have to buy more slots for to use more characters. Do you guys they'll think? Probably, yeah, they'll probably give you three free slots, so you have a medium, heavy, and a light. And then if you want, like, so you can use it on like one character and also another character you can use it on two of each weight type and then you'll have to buy slots for more characters like it'll oh, be like bag slots or something or like build templates because i have inside information believe me or don't believe me it's up to you you don't have to believe me but i have heard through the grapevine that the reason that legendary armor did not come out despite it being ready all of this time was because of the outrage of monetization over build templates because people got so mad at that and legendary armor was already ready and has already been ready for a while but they didn't they couldn't monetize it or figure out how to monetize it without making people very angry so there was a post by fire attunement over on their official forums yeah now mm -hmm. th this yeah okay so i, I do I just want to address this I, I hang on let me try and show it on stream actually because i can do that now i'll try and show the statement here and yeah this has like been kind of touted as yeah this is like the the response from arena saying that it isn't going to be monetized in my opinion this is actually not quite good enough right like yeah. I, I think it's not explicit enough um really I, you don't think it's I mean, to me, this no, says that. No, 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 no. Okay. Look, look what they say There's here. Like, ambiguity yeah, there. yeah, yeah. There's it says it's just free. No scare quotes needed. Seriously, we'll talk more about how Legendary Armory works because of release, but there is no gem or gold cost to access or use the Legendary Armory. That exact statement could be said about build templates. There is yeah. no gem or gold cost associated with um, accessing or using build templates. This is not explicit enough. Like, I this actually scares me more than them just the original tweet right like the, the the original tweet is like oh you know i was like, oh man it's gonna be free that's awesome this tweet is it's or this post on the forum is actually not good enough like it needs to say right there will be no gold cost in like unlocking or using it and there is no there are no microtransactions associated with the legendary armor. Like, that is the correct response. Now, to be clear, I actually think it is that way. I think this is simply, like, a very, very poor choice of words here uh, by reading it on the front. I just think they 
what they didn't quite understand what people were worried about. Like they, because like, I think it would be fair to say that a lot of players are pretty traumatized about build templates, right? With good yeah. reason, by the way. Um, so I think that's what people are worried about happening, and they do not want build templates too. And this answer does not exclude build templates too. And that's why people right, are worried. And I really hope Arena are uh, more I explicit. I'm the only one here, and, and that's okay. But I actually think that this is... I don't think there's going to be any strings attached. Uh, that's delusional of me. It really yeah. is. No, no, I, I agree with you, Inksuchi. I agree with you. I think they just misspoke there. I just think they didn't express themselves correctly. Um, to be clear, okay. I actually agree with you. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I mean, I, in I, reality, it, it, they will indirectly monetize it, I guess, in a sense, by just attaching it to the legendary stuff because people are spending their hard-earned dollars on, on gems all the time. It makes sense to just indirectly monetize it like that. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's sort of interesting in the sense that this is going to sort of, in a little way, in my mind anyway, it devalues a number of legendaries because unless you actually want those skins and those effects, you only need one legendary of each type, right? Yeah. You only need one axe and one rifle and one whatever. Um, so that should be interesting. Yeah, I think it will be very interesting. I think this is a godlike quality of life feature. And also, I think it might, in a way, kind of fall into the progression of the game. Like, I think something that almost bamboozles players a little bit in Guild Wars 2 is they don't really know what they should be going after. In a way, I almost think that they can, with the Legendary Armour, it could be like, oh yeah, like this is like your, this is your thing, right? You want to slowly fill out your Legendary Armoury and have like this full set of gear, almost like the Hall of Monuments, right? Like in Guild Wars 1, you're like collecting yeah. all the little weapons, all that kind of stuff. And, and I'm sure there'll be slowly achievements. Sending it out there as well. I'm sure there'll be achievements for, for unlocking X number of whatever, you know? Who you think? Yeah, absolutely. Come on. I like that. Free Maybe. AP. Yeah, like Deroyer will have... Purple you know, in every hole. Yeah, he'll, he'll have max AP, right? But, um, <laughs> and that'll drive some people. But for the, for the for the regular Guild Wars 2 type of player, um, and someone, someone brought up a good question, what if you have two swords or two axes, like, you know, you're dual wielding? Do you think you're going to need two axes and two swords i don't think so i, think I i'm yeah, gonna yeah. even take it a step further i'm gonna say you will only need one rune and one sigil instead Probably. of making a full set of runes i think you'll only nah, need to no, no way no way 100 percent. i 100 percent think that's how it no works. i don't know i don't know it, it really depends it, the example with the weapons as well is also a very curious one. Like, how many can you actually just duplicate out? Can you just pull I out think it will be. Great uh, I, I think know. it will be exactly yeah. like Hall of Monuments, that there will be something you interact with, and once you put a legendary whatever into the armory, you can take out as many copies as you want on a character and just pull it out. Like, I think that's how it will work. So if you put a rune in one time, you will just be able to take out six runes on every character. Assuming you pay, assuming the thing you is pay like, for that character no, to be able no, to no, it. You just want it to be as the bad as possible for Deroy. You just want Deroy to suffer as much as oh, possible. Oh, no, I don't care about I mean, I've, I've already suffered. I, I don't, like, it, no matter how this all turns out, it's going to be... I mean, it's still my worst he, nightmare. He, he, he knows... He Irregardless knows of what made. the specifics are. He knows He, he knows the bed that he's, he's made for himself. He can sleep in it if he wants yeah. to. Here's my question. <laughs> Why didn't they save this for End of Dragons? Well, they... Didn't technically because it's coming out before. But that's what I mean. Why, didn't, why yeah. not save this feature for? Oh, that's what you meant. Sorry. If it was an expansion feature, then they couldn't monetize part of it because that would be shitty because they're already charging you a box. Price. I don't give a shit about that. Come but on, I mean, let's be real. <laughs> yeah. And they did that with mounts as well. One thing that I keep uh, returning to in regards to like duplicating uh, swords to all, like multiple swords or whatever or runes and whatnot. Is that like what is going to be the actual pull for any odd player to go for Gen Three legendaries? If uh, like, is it literally just going to be the skin and the unlock, or will there still be some limitations to how many things that you can actually pull out? I don't know, but I can actually imagine that it's it's going to be somewhat limited. Well, yeah. when it wants us to wants to see the playing mugs. Um... So the limitation that I would see happening is that they're not going to include runes and sigils. It'll just be weapons and armor. 
and accessories at first, at first. Um, the the reason you would want to go for Gen Three legendaries, they might have, right they might do the breather, finally. Um, yeah. Which and I know underwater I content point. is kind of pointless, but give me a fucking spear, yes, yeah. for the new uh, uh, elite specs. Give me the fucking spear Gen Two, or well, Gen Three technically. Give and me the Gen spear. Three stuff is there, likely there to be flashier than Gen One, Gen Two. That'll be yeah, subjective but I mean, to like, taste, but... Go on the... is... Wait, hang on. Yeah, just go on the gym store. Just, just like, I mean, cut this everything's off. Everything's flashy there nowadays. Wait, is, is there an achievement for owning a legendary weapon? What is that, like, just for, like, having one? Like, for having is... a, for exactly one? Yes, there is for what... uh, account binding one. Or What's it called? What, what's the achievement called? Because I want to... I, I want to search it on efficiency uh, real quick. Wait, legendary... What's it called? Chat, you help us out. Legendary collector. Oh, there's one for binding five legendaries as well. Like, because I I really want to uh, like the, see like armor. Uh, how many people yeah, have unlocked bind, this achievement? Bind five. It's called legendary collector. Bind five unique legendary weapons or trinkets. I think. Okay. That's, right. That's hang on. So I'm going so to look up. that up. There's got to be one more, right? Right. Legendary llama collector. What the fuck? Okay. So uh, here's the thing. Uh, I'm on efficiency right now, which again is going to kind of over represent the it's going to be an overrepresented number right like the number in this is going to be higher than the broader population because like you know obviously like more veteran yeah, players are going to be armory yeah. and like the thing is i don't think that arena is super worried about like oh what's the pull for gen threes because here's the stats guys right the stats here is that um on efficiency third just 13 percent of the player base have got five legendaries or more right like realistically yeah. it's probably significantly lower than that in the actual um in the actual stats in the actual game because like obviously probably like not you know a, a fairly low portion of players are actually on um efficiency but like then, as okay. a rule so it's like it's yeah people people aren't let's gonna have them for the armory second, or though. the skin and it's gonna be the skin it's like the major draw right well right you know no but let's be real here for a second how in the world how ever did it come to pass that gen 3 legendaries got green lit i this is the actual case like, I, there, I, I, there yeah. seems to be no pull they're devaluing it and nobody really really are crafting them anyways or at least not a large percentage of it yeah i, I mean did, I'm, I, I'm inclined so, to agree like i i think i i was not I, the, I was absolutely not expecting um legendary weapons to be coming with the expansion i did not see that that was actually like a whoa like a big bomb big for me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I would say that, um, I, don't get me wrong, I was surprised as well. I didn't think they would touch Legendaries again with a 10-foot pole because no. how difficult Gen 2 was for them. On the other hand, towards the end, towards the middle slash end of Gen 2, when they gave up on creating a real story around the Legendary, which unfortunately was really cool, and they just sort of said, fuck that, let's just yeah. make Legendaries, let's uh, you know, collect all these items, you get a Legendary. So I, I think that's how Gen 3s will, will work as well, right? Collect a whole bunch of items, craft your legendary, you'll have it. It's much easier to make a bunch of legendaries in that fashion than the real Gen 2 early days. And as we're proof, Gen 3 legendaries creates a lot of hype. Yeah, it does. And I think it, I think it's important for the the expansion to have like these like big things to chase after and there's gonna be a lot of new players coming into the game they're gonna chase after legendaries right that's kind of like as you know this is what you do in guild wars so you hunt down skins that you really like right the armory is going to be really good for old player attention too there's a reason to like hunt down the legendaries for old players like veteran players rather it's like oh yeah. i can add it to my armory um and same thing with making also, runes and sigils, a right? very very huge like uh, potential for uh you're saying it player interest in the expansion because i remember back with path of fire one of the things that i actually found to be a real gripe of the path of fire expansion overall to this day that exists is their implementation of the gen 2 legendaries into the reward schemes because they essentially just botched the entire um the entire uh, uh reasoning for anyone ever playing uh playing path of fire to get the legendary uh, their legendary weapons because it's more expensive it's more difficult uh, everything about it is just worse than just simply going to Heart of Thorns, map completing, and you're done. You have a Gen 2 Legendary. It's just, and this time, if they're actually integrating it, pro integrating it properly, uh, only 
to the Canton maps or whatever, they actually have a real chance of making some real cool legendary quests or at least experiences, even if they don't have quests attached to them. Just a, just as a reward, it would be... It, they could actually make it really good. Yeah. Because it's fucking Path of Fire. I, I think Inks was, like, saying that, you know, they're probably just going to make, like, the, oh, just stand in lines, arch and craft for half an hour um things. But, like, what if they don't? Like, can, can you guys imagine if they actually managed? To, I mean, like, okay, look, I'm not, I'm going to get made fun of for saying this, but what if they actually did a few of them with a, with a collection? Or maybe all of them with a collection, if, if they actually did that? Is, it, is that like, possible? Is yeah. that conceivable? Like, because, you know, the, when they were making, like, the I Gen like 2 they stuff... Don't have to. They don't have they to. They don't have to even go that, that far. Like, with the with the, the whole Nevermore uh, story arc or whatnot, they literally just have to do something that uh, is fully, really well integrated into the re reward structures. All the hearts, some of the quests, and the events that you do all throughout with having to drop this weird thing or whatnot. They don't have to make it overly complicated and give it a story. But with heart, like, with Path of Fire... They simply just took an existing reward scheme, which was the Gen 2 legend uh, legendary system that Heart of Thorns and the Living Stories had, and they integrated uh, new, a new recipe to craft the exact same thing, but for more money and more effort. It was just, it was bad. It was really terrible. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. All I'm saying is, they, they, they don't have to do much to actually do do it justice as a sure. as a decent reward for playing yeah. the uh the expansion yeah if it, yeah i, I, I want mean, to believe but i don't i would really like to yeah. see it like maybe not to the same extent i don't think everything has to be like chuka and chompa or something no that doesn't have to be that extreme mm -hmm. but i think it would be really nice to have something actually tied into the world right because something like you know yeah i mean like i, I afk'd and just made shining blade in like half an hour right and it was very sad it was it was depressing wasn't you know it was a feels yeah. bad man well ideally some of the things that you have to collect would involve doing events in the world so that you're engaged in something but you know that eventually once you've been playing long enough that's not actually how it works anymore but it's unfortunate i, I just don't know that they have the resources to craft even a simple story related yeah. to them that, that, that's why i'm um, not really setting my hopes up for that either i really don't. wrong again inks nike yeah. says like, oh i love you nike you know it, it's super interesting like the in my opinion arena is such an enigma of a company right like i feel like all these other games companies are pretty predictable in my opinion arena can just like do some random shit right you know like the, the, i i just feel like sometimes they just pop off and just do something completely unexpected and unpredictable and I think it's so difficult to predict like what the expansion is going to be and how it's going to pan out because in a way I almost feel like we're going to get a very different Aina experience now because like HOT they were still like holy shit like you know Living Story was like you know our devs were basically half dead it was it was horrible right so we had like this big content drought Path of Fire they went in the other direction and they were also like oh by the way hey you see all this sand here guys we made it in the desert because we're making a Dune game get it we're making a Dune game it's not about Guild Wars 2 anymore right so during Path of Fire it was like oh yeah we're literally gonna copy paste the same living world map and hope you guys don't notice I'm looking at you corner there um right they like that's were, yeah in reality uh, they were just practicing their uh desert textures yeah they were Dune game. but <laughs> that was not, no i never realized that but it's totally yeah yeah possible like we're we're, we're <laughs> in a we're in a very different situation with the arena right now in my opinion because they are as far as we understand and the way it seems is that they're actually like going super hard on guild wars 2 and they're going, they're going to, you know, kind of unleash their full force onto the expansion. So, like, I'm, I'm just saying, I think it's entirely possible that we actually get more than we bargained for here. Um, like, I think the roadmap there was, like, definitely more than I was expecting to see. Um, I was expecting, like, a dead zone between now and now the expansion, to be honest, right? I was like, oh, yeah. well, Same. yeah, time to chill out, I guess. We're just going to have a little, you know, this AFK for a while. But that, that's not going to be the case with all, like, the, all the bonus weekends and all that kind of stuff coming out there. The Taunt of Legends, the marionette coming back. And, I mean, that's kind of spicy, actually, by the way. Way. um there's actually a, a very interesting detail in the marionette that i really want to get into actually Ray really touch on it might be a little bit conspiracy minded Dude. but Dude. i think it's super interesting um but i don't know i, I think it's possible that arena net um might like really come at this one swinging right and, and and go super hard on making a lot of content and you know push the, and kind of rectify the mistakes that they've made in the past and and really nail us i think they just want to sell the expansion 
I True. Know. I think they're doing a terrible job if that's their goal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that... <laughs> Did they learn nothing? Okay, so I'm not a partner anymore, and so I don't know what the talk is like. But uh, did they learn nothing from Path of Fire? Did, did they learn nothing from Path of Fire and how to interact with their partners? Because, in my opinion, and all of us here I, I were partners for Heart of Thorns. Um, yeah, the yeah. engagement was way higher, way better, way more involved for Heart of Thorns than anything close to Path of Fire. And, and actually, the way that they released information for Heart of Thorns, where they were giving you, like, elite specializations a week at a time or so, was not, only, was not only better for um, content creators, but it was way better for the player base as well to sort of understand and absorb that information a little bit slower and slowly build up hype as they went along instead of doing a content dump one at a time. Probably there were so many leaks with the partner program especially like oh my god the shit that happened with legendary armor no well yeah with legendary <laughs> yeah, armor i forgot yeah. that that was a leak actually oh, oh my yeah god. that was i was thinking a, like oh the the god. stabilizing matrices oh my the stabilizing god. matrices yeah, like yeah. that whole drama like i think finally they said yeah legendary armor did leak didn't it holy shit yeah it did yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um I think with, like, basically they were just like, yeah, fuck the partner program. Like, we're not doing anything with them anymore. And, like, I think that's basically the direction they went because the partners were like, fuck the game, ain't it? It's not doing anything with us anymore. And well, so, uh, like, and I want to address this a little bit, too. Somebody said... Uh, yeah, like, on, you know, Bloodstone Finn leaked, Legendary Armor leaked. Like, damn, there's a lot of shit that leaked. Marius Boda says you guys leaked the shit out of it. it believe it or not, most of the leaks weren't they weren't us they weren't partners they like, were we didn't leak we didn't leak program. legendary armor like we we didn't leak stabilizing matrices we didn't leak it, any of that shit like they would don't, you, don't say that it was like us yeah i, I feel like us. It, it's it's a combination of a, a lot of different things in in certain cases except especially for like legendary armor it was like a case of someone trusting someone they probably shouldn't have trusted probably yeah and that, and that was what leaked it it was like it, it wasn't intentionally done by the partner at all and yeah yeah it was oh my god it was just yeah it, it, it there were definitely i mean it wasn't me, i would say I'm like the, the guy because the, i know he felt bad yeah the really big egregious leak was definitely the stabilizing matrices but other than that like honestly not much was leaked by the partner program as such um like you know but this is this is probably we should we should just say you know this is this is not a, not a good place to be no, so no. like on, on like the the marketing thing i do think it is actually very likely that we do see a similar situation to pof i mean well they, dude they, they've essentially told us oh, this yeah, now definitely. right they've essentially said this right like because on july 27th we're going to have like this big info dump uh on the expansion they're gonna release info about the beta right there's gonna be like a beta weekend to test out the elite specializations the right all of path of fire leaked early too yes it did the whole expansion leaked i someone <laughs> i was talking with an employee of anet in discord like literally like having a conversation with him and then i got a message from someone else from a 4chan thread that was filled with information from path of fire and so I linked it to the Anet person I was talking to in Discord, and literally they just replied with a poop emoji and didn't say anything to me ever again. Damn. I, and I know Teapot doesn't want to talk about it, so I'll just I say this last thing that. on the subject. But okay. partners do not get information that far advanced. Yeah, they, yeah, they get information maybe a week before something is going to release. They don't get information five, six months in advance. It's just not how it works. Yeah, the alpha testers are like the big leaders. Like, let's be yeah, honest. internal and alpha testers and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like that's that's Sorry, where a lot of that, that. And, and that's where a lot of stuff actually ended up getting leaked. I mean, like, I remember Brazil uh, showing me a picture of Zera, the original yeah. incarnation of Zera that he obtained, right? And it was a yeah. I mean, like that was like, dude, trust me. Like, it was not um, partners that got hold of this. Like, a lot of the stuff that, particularly from raids that got leaked, nothing. It, partners did not get early access to this really, like in, in a meaningful way. Like this was all like way early, right? Like way okay, early. Another in this way, stuff, partners right? don't get that much of an early access. Partners yeah. come in at like the end of the beta. 
basically yeah. they come in with like a week or two left and like hey guys it's basically done you can make content on it so you have content ready to go on launch day so that way like it's basically close enough that it will be the real thing so that way you can start to help the community but then start like shit started to get leaked and like there was stuff that came from the partner program that was huge and so like i think they were just like and like as far as i know like basically all of the raid testing guilds got taken out because like somehow delta connected figured out the pillow and how to get the pillow into the real game but <laughs> yeah like there's some big shit that's happened that like nobody knows about so anyways yeah poop emoji is correct yeah, for yeah. All of it, yeah i mean like regardless of that like yeah, Aina is going to do the same thing. They're going to do like a big announcement in the on the 27th of July. And then they're going to say, boom, there's going to be a beta weekend. And then they're going to drop the X back. Like, based off that, what, what do you guys think? Are you guys thinking um, oh, uh, September? The way require a uh, bigger marketing budget. It does. Then, it, bigger than they have, I think. Well, I mean, I, I, yeah, I think Arena has like very much changed their approach. The, the, whole, like, the real reason. And dude, Aina has actually just figured out how marketing really should be done. Like they have a massive intellect, right? They're like, wait no, a minute, I don't, what did? Like, but but no, think about it. Like there, I mean, I, I think this is what I think. I I wouldn't be surprised if this was actually like to a certain extent their approach, right? Like, correct me if I'm wrong here, but isn't their approach basically like, yeah, you know those other MMOs that you just got tired of and you played because of their massive marketing budget? Like, wow's like crazy cinematic and then you like then you look at the game right you know it's obviously not quite up to par with the cinematic right and then you go like wait dude i'm bored of this game now right and then you go and uh then you go and actually play the guild wars 2 right you just you fall down it's like the safety net right you don't want to quit mmos because you you, know, you filled your life with another game and guild wars 2 is there to catch you right boom it's like the ultimate marketing strategy right the other games yeah, market guild wars 2 right like you know that's how it is they, they absorb all the player base, right? Like they absorb all the other MMO refugees. But yeah, I mean, it, I, I, yeah, I get it. I, I'm kind of fucking around. Like, yes, Arena, please market your game. Come on, it's it's actually rather good. You know, I don't know if you guys know this, but it's a pretty good game actually. Uh, it is fun. Um, but you know, there's gonna be like a big buzz there as well, and then they're gonna launch right into it, I guess. Uh, but yeah, like based off the July thing, when do you guys think? When when are we? What, what month are we looking at? Do you think they? Will they actually be crazy enough to do it like a month after and just say, you know what? August. No. Here we go. No, no. September. They're not Bethesda. I don't yeah. think they'll do it. By the way, <laughs> guys, Fallout Shelter I'm, is available I'm, right now. Yeah, I love Fallout <laughs> Honestly, Shelter. Honestly, I'm still hoping for 2022. That would be so much oh. better for me oh. as a casual player because I know yeah. I have uh, some extra time there. Yeah, we yeah. don't want Guild Wars 2077. Let's be real. We, do, we, we don't I mean, I'm, I'm ready for the, 20, the, the 2022. Do you think Arena yeah, would ever consider delaying the game? Just delaying the release and polishing Arena it up. Arena probably further. would. They, would. NC Soft NC would. Soft They've done it multiple times. They've just never really told us about it, right? That's why we only get the release date like two weeks in advance. Because yeah. <laughs> they don't know. NC they do, they, do they don't know until <laughs> the very last <laughs> moment. I mean, obviously, there's always some internal dates that you're working towards. But <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I fully expect that everything has been delayed multiple times. Hmm. And then we get the, the uh, final uh, Ice Root Saga episode uh, two weeks in advance, and it te definitely lives up to everyone's expectations. Yeah, so, and it was uh, like, awesome that we got it two weeks. Th th this is why I'm so suspicious about like the expansion being kind of ready to go or like in a good state. Like, why on earth would they like push a release date a release date forwards if they weren't like pretty confident, yeah, right? right? Like, yeah. why would they that's do that longer. if they were not confident? What the hell? What the fuck is this? Oh my god! What? This, is, this is out of control. Like, oh there's some god. fucking there's some bots attacking the stream here, guys. New bot. I right, get the Are these shit actual view bots or are these just is this just pasta? I, I well, I believe it's actually an advert. Okay, get, get the hell huh? out of here, right? Go and advertise your services elsewhere, my friend. Okay, actually, don't do that either. Get know. banned. Mods. <laughs> Mods. Right. <laughs> but anyway, oh yeah, sorry. Continue. What? Go wait. We, 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 I confused. thought we all met. I, I got, I got, we got oh, wait, do, I, I, do we all get confused? I think I think everyone got confused there. The bots threw us all off. Yeah, the, anyway, yeah, dude, yeah. the bots have disoriented about, us. We should talk about lagging and bots in Guild Wars 2. No. <laughs> no. And, no. Yeah, I, mean, I like, can't be sure. I mean, you know, there's been you know, there have been a few instances of that, but yeah, I mean, like this is not. I mean, let's just not even go there. To be honest, you know, like you know, warrior rifle getting a buff next time, so like Tor and Chad will make his return, I guess potentially. Uh, there'll be a few uh, 
warriors with the power of flight being added to the game but never mind that actually right uh never mind that entirely because yeah like i, I don't I, I you know when it comes to the release schedule of the game the and the expansion the yeah oh yeah you want yeah bots like bots and hackers yeah, yeah, are gonna yeah, win yeah, that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that would be quite funny but like in my opinion i think that arena is confident about the expansion and they're gonna release it sooner rather than later i don't think there's gonna be delays i think it's gonna be definitely 2021 like at the very at the absolute latest it's gonna be october i can't imagine it being any later than that like i would no, i would probably yeah. say like september Even though i really want it to yeah, it's gonna be September. Really and drop of the bomb. Take as much fucking time as possible. Yeah, that would that would always be my hope because yeah, it would kind of suck in the in the short term, but it would be better for the long term health of the game, right? Like uh, in my opinion, it is extremely important that End of Dragons comes out and it's finished. Agree that? Didn't we all just agree that this was the sending off expansion? You got, I think <laughs> it probably will be. <laughs> I would be down. Like I would honestly I mean, be long completely term fine. Of the, of the game is like, eh, I mean, e EOD end yeah, of I, development, I, right? End I'm of development, right there. I, I'd, I'd be saying cool this that. without any irony in my voice. It would be or hysteria, like sweet, a, a proper, a proper end of expansion. Mm. Mm. Wow, and then you can be free. You just you just want to be free, Dora. Is that it? Like you just want to break no, no, free no, no, from no. the game. I mean, like, I, I feel like we're just kind of digging digging further and further down something i mean they can't ever live up to people's expectations and, and and the longer this keeps going i mean at least not they can't live up to the expectations with guild wars 2. get something get something new rolling get guild a new three. era they really tried that twice and failed oh yeah, yeah 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 let's uh but let's dedicate let's say expansion cut all right guys we're now working on the future of Guild Wars, the universe in space. I don't know. Guild Wars yeah. Mobile. Space. Like, 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 I didn't fail at that. Like every Radio other uh, gaming company working on something. Just Radio Silence for like a couple of years. Wow. Well. Like, well. No, I, I, I think they'll have a winning story after EOD, unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think well, they're, I say I, unfortunately, they're, gonna go again. They, they're definitely going to go around again for sure, right? Like, it's definitely going to With the exception of, like, Season 3 and Season 4, it's always kind of been half-assed. Um, skeleton Crew Run, which doesn't work. They they keep trying to run this game with the Skeleton Crew, and it never works. Um, yeah, and I don't get it. Okay. Yeah, I don't get it either, but that's what they do. And um, all their other projects that they sacrifice Guild Wars 2 for over and over and over again fail. So they don't have anything but Guild Wars 2. So they, they have to keep developing for it. Well, that, well, that's what I mean. Like, if they just make a hard cut and then focus on the next the next era of ArenaNet. We are in the next era of ArenaNet. Uh, you mean, do you mean Amazon <laughs> Game but Studios? Let's be, but let's be real here. Yeah, the Amazon Studios. <laughs> Any Crucibles in the chat, guys? Any uh, Crucible like, gamers? Be real here. What would happen afterwards? Like after End of Dragons, let's say Steve dies. What would Which happen? Expect, yeah. This this entire this entire. Do you know what they should do? Like totally Loki. Driven. Loki, what they should do is the first thing that happens in the expansion is the water dragon dies. Yes. And the rest of the expansion is fighting like bad said. people. Yes. Like an organization of like, like Kurzix or something or like uh, the bad guys. Yeah. Like That's you're saying what, what could happen, happen. but like. They, the writers can actually make something that isn't like shackled to this like yes. this absolute like dead weight of the Elder Dragon storyline, right? Like it, yeah, that, that's this opens up the game so much. They can actually tell, they can tell stories that have actual characters in them instead of just like fighting against like an actual tornado, which is basically what the Elder Dragons are. Like oh, we're being we're fighting a very strong gust of wind. Right? It's not. It's just not. It's not engaging in the same way. It's, it's you know when you're fighting versus something like and they tried to do this a bit with Jormag, right? Because they realized they realized this was an issue. Like three X packs in, they realized this was a problem. Um, that when you're fighting a dragon, it has zero personality, right? It's just like a giant thing that runs at you and you just it's shoot it with to. a cannon, right? But Krakatoric had personality. Are they like they they, they, they like tacked it on at the end? Yeah, like yeah, I mean, they tacked it on Jormag at the end. Don't get me wrong. The Jormag, this is great. Uh, they did a good Lots job of. I'm sorry, what? Jormac had lots of personality. Yeah. Until the last they started. Minutes. Oh, they yeah, yeah, yeah. They did the opposite. They did the opposite. They gave like, Jormac oh, yeah, personality. We forgot. We forgot and then at the last fight, they just 
gutted all of it and mm-hmm. forgot that it had any personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess I just prefer like this, not exactly the more down to earth stuff, but something that's a little bit more, um, I, I find characters like Joko and, and like the white mantle story a little bit more interesting because you just have like no. this more like down to earth, like straight up engagement, like with these characters yeah. there. It was kind of the same that's thing right. in Guild Wars 1, right? Like in, in Guild Wars 1, it was just like a, lo- a little bit more relatable, just a little bit more grounded in, in the gameplay there as well, right? Like, you know, when you, you know, we didn't really fight we didn't really like directly fight Jormag or Primordus, right? Like Orin like detonated a giant light orb, disco ball, and blew them both up or made them eat each other. Okay. Right? Okay. Every single other uh evil bad guy that we've ever fought against, which I like as well, Joko and uh, Scarlet or whatever and all that jazz, it's all really been to like warm up to the dragons, right? Everything's always been centered around the dragons. Yoko was there so that Orin could survive. Uh, Scarlet did you, was did there. Did you say so that you like Scarlet, or did you say like Scarlet? No, I'm just saying. You you were using I, Scarlet I, I, as an ex- I just heard like and Scarlet just, next to each other and almost deactivated. Yeah. <laughs> deactivated. I'm just saying. I, I know. I was just okay. It was just a generalization of like liking the the character uh telling instead of the whatever instead of the dragons um but yeah it, it, what i'm saying is that all of those have always been centered around the dragon storyline same with uh balthasar so to speak or um the mersad dude which was balthasar lazarus. everything was really just yeah lazarus thank it you it was always everything someone was else up. and now we're getting to the point where all of this warming up for the dragon story is coming to an end so are we really going to pull pull stories out of out of nowhere just to tell stories about politics in the game or some new bad guy that rises with no real stake or purpose to the to the overall theme of the game, which is dragons? Sure. I mean, I mean, it's going to feel like a de-escalation maybe, for maybe sure, I'm right? Just over... Yeah. So I mean, why not just not do it? Well, because I I mean I. I... I think, you know, I don't, I, this is a, this is something that I think a lot of MMOs struggle with. I think WoW is like the number one game that had issues with this, right? It was like, ah, you know, at level 60, you defeated a literal god, right? And then like, oh yeah, level 70, you're fighting like a guy who's got wings basically, right? You know, yeah, like there are issues with this, right? Um, Where, you know, like it feels, it feels weird to go between like this epic story where if you fail, like the entire world will literally explode um, to dealing with, uh, you know, like, oh, these people don't like each other very much and they're assassinating each other and killing each other. Wow, this is, you know, like, this is really worth our time as, like, the savior of the entire universe. But I, I guess that's kind of like just the contrivance of MMOs, right? Like, you know, when we go to Camtha, there is going to be a quest where you have to, like, kill, like... <laughs> Like, I don't know, bears, right? You know, that's going to happen, right? It will be there, right? We will, we will be doing that at some point, right? Yeah. And, like, when, when, bears, uh, yeah. and, you know, like, I mean, I'm doing Astralara right now and Hope, and I'm, I, I just had to go kill a level four mosquito, right? To craft my level, le- my, my legendary mm. weapon, right? It's like, <laughs> I, I mean, that. I know, dude, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, so bad. Th- this is, th- yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, I, I, I honestly, I, I wouldn't mind, obviously, that they were just telling smaller stories, like doing doing more raids or whatnot, but honestly, I, I don't see the story in any any large capacity really proceeding with Guild Wars 2 after End of Dragons. I, I really just don't, not without it completely detouring from everything they've done for the last uh, eight years. Um, but, I mean, I, sure, I'm, I'm happy to, to, be, uh, to be proven wrong, but... I honestly think that they're, so they're, they're the going thing. to move on. Right now, they do have a plan for the next story, whatever that is. Will it be good? Well, probably not. But, you know, well, they do have a plan. Like, just as a speculation, like, what? suppose that, f- for whatever reason, the end of Dragons is very, very literal, and Orin has to go as well. We don't necessarily have to kill her, right? Because that, you know... Yeah. You know, that, that would be, you know, maybe that's a little bit too far for Orin and right? not cuddly enough. What if she's got to go and she's got to leave? Yeah, right? and, and then we and then we have this situation in Tyria where all of a sudden everyone's like, well, hang on, there's no police anymore, right? I can do what I want, right? And and you have all these different like you have like this massive war right between various different groups and different factions within you know honestly, within Tyria honestly, as a whole, right? Another guild war. So much, 
Yeah, isn't that so much more of an interesting lore concept to build a third game on? Yes. Than to actually live out. Not wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair enough, right? You know, okay, I can see it. I see it. I think that would be like I could not an I could statement. definitely see that as the premise for Guild Wars three in yeah. space. And I would. I mean, I want Guild Wars three. Don't get me wrong. I mean, wait, in yeah, uh, I'm just quoting. <laughs> yeah, I'm just the quoting. Jason that, franchise already yeah. tried that. But it didn't work out. I mean, I would. I would love Guild Wars three. Like my preference would be a Guild Wars three because I think. I, I think you know what what everyone here would agree on is that Guild Wars 2 has a lot of issues that make it difficult for Anet to deliver, right? Like that, you know, there are, you know, we're on DirectX 9 here, guys, on an engine from Guild Wars 1. We're having a few difficulties, right? Every single patch breaks something uh, in the game randomly and it doesn't get fixed. Not good, right? You know, like there are some issues here. Um, so yeah, like sure, I, I think going for a sequel would be good, but I still think that they aren't there yet. I mean, like how long does a game take to develop? Like five years? More than that, maybe? Right, for an MMORPG. Right, yeah, like a new engine. It really like, depends on what you're building. Yikes, out. right? I mean, yeah, maybe they can use someone else's engine. They can maybe use something like Unreal or, or even Lumberyard, right? What Amazon's using. Like, maybe they, they can get away with that and, and pull that off, but they might want to make their own thing so they can have, like, very specific, like, um, functionality that they exactly want. I mean, like, even if you might necessarily want it, Dora, I almost feel like it's going to be Ice Brood Saga. Not, not Ice Brood Saga, but it's the same, like, philosophy behind Ice Brood Saga. Like, it's, like, necessary, right? I think that they're going to have to do it, right? Um, and I'm not going to say they, like, don't want to. I'm sure they... I, I, look, I guarantee you that a lot of the devs at, at Arena are incredibly attached to Guild Wars 2. In fact, I guarantee it, like, 100%, right? Like, a lot of the developers there are, like, really, really like the game. And they're like, wow, you know, this is a fun game to develop, right? And they enjoy developing the game. They don't want to, like, just, like, ditch it. It's not that they don't want to. It's just the thing that I think it's going to have to be like, in addition to wanting to do it and liking the game, I think there's going to be a heavy degree of pragmatism because, you know, this is something that we've been hammering, right? Like they don't have another IP. This does not exist. Like this, whereas it's like mystery game, they're going to pull out their ass, right? Like it just, it just doesn't exist. Like what are they going to do? They, 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 they need something to, you know, you know, keep the money coming they, in, right? They... And keep generating income, right? But, that, but that's where I, I'm saying, as an investor, wouldn't it be smarter for you to advocate for them to move on to something else that has a a refreshing, uh, or that creates a refreshing view on ArenaNet and, and all their assets and the value of the company and, and whatever. I mean, it, it really isn't up to the developers of whether they like it or not. It's 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 the stakeholders in the end that are, that will drive this this company either into the ground or uh, or to live on forever I, and i i mean i just i just don't really see a scenario in which they can keep on doing guild wars 2 if everything seems to be declining well and maybe i'm wrong obviously i could easily be wrong because i do not know the numbers behind the scenes i don't know how much money they're actually making uh is it a, a money money maker or is it uh, kind of just uh, floating on top to the to the point where they have to cancel an entire season to to make room for a uh, uh, a cash cow expansion. I don't know, but they yeah. could go full fan service with this expansion. They could do it and then just lead into Guild Wars three while everyone is hyped up on we all, cash we cow. we already have the cosmic cod piece right. So I mean, like we're not we're not far off. On, on like going full fan service and like i'm expecting to like to lean pretty heavily into like the an not not anime but you know like a, a, a much more eastern yeah. style right we for sure fight shiro's anime daughter yeah <laughs> she has become she has his the fortune teller said his swords would be desirable he had an anime daughter that found his swords and now she's the enemy and she single-handedly killed the sea dragon and took his power and Ooh. so now we have to beat her yeah <laughs> and it turned her two dimensional when, when she took the dragon <laughs> power, and it's like yeah. Paper Mario and like Zelda. She can go in the walls now. That's how we do I mean, it. I'm, I'm digging oh it. my god, it's, this is good. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, so go. down. Hype train. Like my hype levels were a ten earlier. Now they're an eleven. Yeah. Everything <laughs> it's got up oh. more energy. Right. She sealed the sea dragon inside her. That, yeah, obviously, MSC would say that. MSC's got... You, know, you just inspired him to draw something now, by the way, Brazil. Well, like, yeah, you're going to see that. Who? Who did MSC. I inspire? MSC. He, he really enjoys drawing Desmina, if you catch my drift. I need to see. Oh, you get Have you ever drawn Desmina with the same characteristics as female Norn? 
Um, because if so, you should DM me on Discord. So I, I believe not, <laughs> but I mean that could probably be that could potentially be arranged. I mean, like you know, I think that <laughs> he'd probably be down. I don't know. <laughs> I would be a good writer. I would. I wouldn't be a good writer for this game. I'd be a good game director for this yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, so, well, yeah. The, the I, position, I, the, I believe the uh -oh. position is still open actually. So like, you can maybe like, put in your I resume. I would Slide be good at the it. DM. Yeah. Hey guys, I have more experience than Guild Wars 2 than you do. Please put me in charge. That's my resume. Nice. Um, um, Hired. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think we just have to, to wait and see. In a way, I, I guess, Dora, I view Ender Dragons as what you're describing to an extent. I think they're going to say, right, Anet is back, right? Anet before, Omega Lil, right? Guild Wars 2, Omega Lil. And I think you are right here. I, I think that. As, as, I really hate to say this, actually, because I disagree with this on a principal level to such a high degree, actually. I think Guild Wars 2 is kind of permanently tarnished, right? I, I think people have their preconceived notions about it, and they'll never change, right? Like, I think a broad yeah, part of the MO community is that's like that. And I hate that. I think that's so stupid, but I do think it is true. Um, but I do think ArenaNet can distinguish themselves here with the expansion. Um, and you know what? Don't let me down, ain't it? All right, okay. You've already won one battle with the legendary armory, okay? You know, I, look seriously. I, I was, I went all in. By the way, Dora, I said I would go to um Seattle and eat Dartbringer, and I said I would eat cock at the same time, right? So like, you know, I, I like put a lot on the line there, right? Like for the whole uh, legendary armor thing, and this time it paid off. Feels good. Uh, there you go. I mean, Even... I'm actually, I'm actually heading back there uh, in a couple of months. Um... Yeah, you should. Uh, you should definitely go with me. We can. Uh, we can swing by the Anet office. Yeah, if we can get the big. Oh, like, if they yeah, if, yeah, if, yeah. They, if if they see me coming, they're gonna like get this get this idoot out of here. Like get I'm him out. Lock the doors. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah, lock him I'll out. Be there in August. Yeah, let's go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna MSC, like. It is really good. If MSC is here, I uh, your your art is really great. Yeah. I like it. Good job. I'm gonna do you know you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna bring back bad memories from I'm gonna like bring a drone and it's like camera hack right so I'm just gonna like fly hack around and like look in like you know look inside their offices there like bring back memories of ERP there as well get purged feels bad yeah yeah it's gonna be good I'm, it I'm is serious, be good. There. yeah 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 we, we was it yeah I mean I would like you know it would be fun to visit at some point actually like you know I'm. <laughs> I want, you know, it, it, it's funny, like, I, I I think that, you know, as a content creator, right, like, in, even, you know, in a small game like Guild Wars 2, you have a, you have a certain level of sense that people, like, are aware of you to an extent, but, like, I, I one of my most entertaining Guild Wars 2 memories is that I went to, um, Rezd in London with, uh, with this Angels, and none of these motherfuckers recognized me, like, no one knew who the fuck I was. <laughs> at all uh, right like I it was so good right actually. it was right. yeah. <laughs> there's a picture of inks from the convention from uh pax there is yeah <laughs> you were there and like who was it that you were talking to you were in line like queuing yeah, in line um and it may have been feel free Gray. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And she, and so she goes by because she's she's saying hello to people in line fans or whatever and I, i'm in line because i didn't know where to go to do my stage talk I was there to do a stage talk uh, about Guild Wars 2 with Heart of Thorns. And I, I and I seen, I was like, hey, Gail, how's it going? And she just was like, I, uh, okay, <laughs> it's going good. And then I would say, it's MMO Inks. I'm here for my stage talk, which happens in like 15 minutes. And she's like, who? <laughs> so then I'm like, oh okay. I was like, is Ruby around somewhere? And she's oh, like, oh, I think she's on lunch. Let me go see if I can find her comes back like maybe 10 minutes later and then ruby was like hello gail had no idea who the fuck i was like she just didn't know i was gonna go on, on stage in like 15 minutes with a cosplayer and community uh, manager by the way what's that community manager by the way yeah had no idea who the heck i was yeah no idea <laughs> Oh man, uh, that's good content. I, you, you it was actually better, it was actually joke. Inks that hacked Gilgray's oh, account. <laughs> <laughs> his revenge, revenge. <laughs> yeah, his revenge is going through there as well. Oh man, yeah, I mean that that is it, and that's an interesting experience, right? Like, I mean, I'm actually curious. Wait, Dora, can you say like how many people? Um, because you you wasn't really busy. Did did people know who you were, or can you not say? Uh, there, there were a few actually, but I didn't actually get to, to meet that many. Uh, yeah, but there were yeah yeah there were a few that knew. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Also, I probably had a bit of infamy. Infamy. Let's be real. <laughs> so, I mean, there, there, oh, there, there, there's that aspect to it. Did, did they let you into the writing department, or were you banned there? Like, were you banned yeah, it was into after. the? <laughs>
It was after the after oh, event. Yes. Oh boy. Yeah. There is so. a Discord server that has an entire catalog of that entire event hard pinned in it where you can teapot you may still know of that why discord. i not a part of this oh wait the, oh wait wait, wait that discord wait in that yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i know i know the one yeah with, with those people <laughs> yeah <laughs> you don't want to yeah. go in there oh my god dude it's well, it's just i joined and i was I like tried. I was it's, like, it, what? it's a Tequattle. It's just a Tequattle guild, it's a tequattle right? It's a, guild. Yeah, they, they they do daily Tequattle on reset. That's you know nothing, daily nothing, uh, nothing, nothing weird what? there at all. <laughs> they do they do Jakar a lot on Snubs. <laughs> <laughs> they're a big fan I'm of so mobility, confused. right? They they use the portal <laughs> ability a lot, you know. Like they're a big fan. Yeah, Portal Guild. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like that, that's another. This is totally no one is gonna get this. A bit of a side no, I feel like I'm so out of the loop. It's fine. Yeah. We can bring I, in. I don't understand. Anything. Yeah, yeah. You have to have stairs in your house to get it. But like, well, like I mean, like that's a bit of a side track there. So let's kind of bring it back uh, to reality there. I guess uh, a little bit. Like you know, let's move away from rando ass hats, right? And like we gotta let Doroya escape his past, right? Like you know, he just needs to. He can tell his grandkids about like the time he was in a PewDiePie video, right? Like you know, in years to come, right? Yeah. Like his, you know, it's it's <laughs> it's gonna be a big meme. But sit down and hear the tale of when Granddad was on yeah. Poo News. Yeah, exactly. Not again. <laughs> again, <laughs> I don't know why you're telling us this story. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, you know, yeah. I think everyone's almost had this mistaken identity because I believe Boots was mistaken for someone, right? Actually, as well. He, yeah, I think they thought Boots he, was Dini um, or something. I think Dini Kong. Yeah, yeah. Kong. That's very funny. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Oh my god, there's nothing better. Uh, some good content there. It was some good content indeed. But let us now move on to a further talk, which is quite interesting <laughs> actually to me. Quite interesting to me. Um and. It is the fact that some content's coming back to the game, right? We are having some uh, new achievements being added to uh, Living World Season 2 oh, and yeah, 3, on that topic. right? Yeah. And the marionette is coming. And like the marionette is probably like one of the... Probably, I feel like it's... Is that the most requested boss to come back, right? Like the most requested piece of content that would died to return? Like it is, right? Like everyone's like... With oh, the exception yeah. of all of Season 1, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Did people really want to like put up those signs again, right? For, yeah, like, Frost they, and Flame. They're like, oh yeah, you know, fuck yeah. On on some level, I understand it because people just didn't experience season one. What they don't understand is that's a good thing. You don't really want to experience season one. <laughs> they don't understand that they don't. You don't really want to know how bad it was. But everyone involved, I get it. Hurt and died. Like, okay, you know what? I want to. I want to see stuff like this come back. Is like the Carker event. Like, come on. We got to get the Carker event outside from the the culling and the kind of unplayable lag. It was kind of epic, right? It was epic. It, even without that, even with that, it was still pretty epic. There were some good things about season one, I think. Like, I think I think saying season one like was universally bad is like is a little harsh. Right? I don't think that's true. I think there were some good things there. Um, the Carker you know. event was the only thing I never and the destruction of Lion's Arch was uh, or not the no yeah the Karka event where they first attacked Lion's Arch. That was the only thing. Of season one that I never ex got to experience. But you never got so, to experience that. You missed that. I never experienced that. I'm. I, wow. I wasn't. I was out traveling at the time, and oh, then man. it was gone. Well, let me back. let me refresh memories for everybody. All it did was destroy your computer. True. It, it ran yeah. on nobody's hardware. True. And I didn't realize it was a one-time event, so I just logged <laughs> off and uh, got no rewards. <laughs> <laughs> I have a my my story uh, of that is like really crazy. Um, <laughs> like <laughs> basically, a friend a friend of mine invited me to a college choir concert Ooh. the weekend that was happening, and I drove for seven hours with his mom to go see him, and I got to the concert and i was like i'm literally missing a one-time event for this and it sucks and so i got back home in time to see that some guy from dnt had like glitched into like 35 map instances of it and basically gotten a precursor from everyone and he was like yeah sucks you missed out bro but like in like oh my God. i got into it at the end like enough to basically lag out and my map crashed and i didn't get to do any of it nice 
<laughs> so like, as you can see guys season times. one should definitely come back immediately right a lot of fun yeah. to be had there right like no <laughs> but i mean yeah i mean like there, there were definitely issues with it but but this is the interesting thing about what what they said here actually and um again like, th this is definitely a bit of a stretch i will admit that this is a stretch on my part here but they actually said explicitly that they're going to actually tune up marionette to meet their current standards right for the game so they're actually altering right. the old content they're actually reworking it they're actually changing it and this is very interesting to me because uh, would I say this is my number one gripe with Arena? No, it's probably my number two gripe with Arena. My number one gripe with Arena is that they refuse to iterate on current designs. Like, like they'll just like leave strike missions hanging for like a year or like not fix the issues with raids. They just won't do that. But like my, uh, you know, my second biggest gripe with Arena is that they refuse to fix shit that's busted, right? Like Wisp of Jaw Mag. Oh, that's not getting fixed anytime soon, guys. Like, oh, oh. You broke uh, 100 CM as she's about to phase. Oh, have fun, right? Now she's going to use all of her abilities like doubled up instead, right? Like, oh, so you want to do Samrog CM and the entire arena is filled with spears. What if the spears just didn't get pulled when they're supposed to because like something changed and now that's completely busted, right? What about keep construct existing, right? Like, you know, what about that? Like, is that ever going to get fixed, right? Uh, like, th th and look. If they are fixing an old piece of content and then adding it back into the game, that's like the next level, right? It's like the, it's like the next level of going back and fixing things. So hopefully they actually realize that, uh, you know, like it's not good if your content like, has borderline game-breaking bugs that players encounter like regularly. Like not a good idea to have that, right? And hopefully we continue to do that. There you go. That's all I have to say. Yeah. Not I, I'm, I'm not sensing that you guys are feeling too enthusiastic about that one. Well, no, because they've already done this with Flame and Frost, right? <laughs> like, they, they had the best dungeon they've ever made, and instead of putting it back in as a dungeon, they put the worst parts of it in as a fractal. As two fractals, actually. Like, uh, all right, go I back mean, and add your whole... Per personally, I've never been... Personally, I've never been much of a of a... A staunch advocate for getting the marionette back i mean it's a I cool know, like, I, 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 yeah like it's i think be... it has a nice ass and it's fun to look at but yeah. other than that yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely. pretty hot but, for a robo girl it... <laughs> but other than that i'm like yeah okay cool uh I, I don't know i view it as another world boss and but unless it really has anything i mean it, 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 exciting and new i don't know it's yeah i've, I've seen it I've been there, but I'm happy for, back. for the people that are and excited about it. It is going to be retuned very shortly. Well, hopefully, anyway. I'm I'm looking forward to it because I you know I I have dim recollections of it. I, I remember how it works. I did it a while ago. Like you know I, I wasn't I was a casual back then, guys. Like I was a filthy casual. I was just I was just playing my yeah. game. I was just going in there, going crazy. I'm playing some Guild Wars too. So you know I'm I'm you know pretty hyped because I can experience it like for realsies this time and like play it um uh, have it a little bit different there and you know it's gonna be some brand new you know some uh, brand new achievements to go with that I'm sure like a bit well like when they you know, kind of like rework to quarter right we'll see some new achievements. Um, you don't uh, think it's just gonna be more like uh, uh, Dragon Storm? Hmm, so I mean, like a uh, close instance with, I mean. I would, if they yeah. did that, I'd be super Same. happy, actually. Yeah, I, I think, that I, yeah, that would yeah, be great. Yeah, yeah. I like, yeah, I, I like yeah. it. By the way, I, I didn't mean that as a, as a diss in any way. I, I, I yeah. actually really like how, uh, how Dragonstorm turned out. It turns out, though, that uh, nobody had really communicated the, uh, uh, the underlying uh, expectation that instances also come with uh, a challenge mode. But uh, other than that, I think it was a really good, good thing. Like, all, all, all known. Yeah, I mean, I, I think well, I, hmm, I don't. That's a very, that's honestly a very good question. I actually don't know the answer to that. I would, I, I would probably, my guess would be they just put it in the open world again. Um, but I guess it wouldn't make sense, right? Because it, it would be very out of context for the current world. Right? But then again, that's how maps are, right? Like maps are. They said it would be. They said it would be right where the destroyed one is. So yeah. Same spot as before. So yeah, it, it's gonna, yeah. They'll put it in the open world and just have it like going on a timer. I It'll guess. be nice to have it refreshed. It'll be nice to have another boss. After you do it once or twice, you'll have your fill of nostalgia. Um, it'll have more attraction to those who never got to do it in the first place. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I think um... it's not a bad thing. It's a good addition. It's a good addition to the game. But yeah, I, I think bringing kind of keeping players up to date there, like particularly 
newer players who won't really have had like that much direct experience. This is like a very wise decision because they're also basically giving away season two and three for free, right? If you log in, right, like you'll unlock the episode. Like you know, one, each episode will have a week assigned to it. Um, you yeah, know, they're, starting, they're that's starting pretty soon, going, right, actually, isn't it? Like that, that, they're, they're going to push really hard for uh, for that. It seems like all people coming back to all the different maps and all the different seasons. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I think that makes Especially sense because it really feels like an end to and a conclusion to to all the seasons. Let's get a, a legendary amulet that that ties them all together in the end. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense because it's going to be like a very good way to kind of tide people over before the expansion, kind of get everyone up to date. But uh, with all of the characters, like one of the, in my opinion, is like the flaws in Guild Wars Two, like kind of selling old content right, on the gem store, is that if you're a new player you get launched into this world that you know nothing about. People are calling you commander for some bizarre reason, right? Like, who are these people, right? And, you know, you, of course, you meet them. You, when, when did, you, you met these characters, like, five years ago. Like, even maybe even, more, like, more than that, like, six years ago even, right? Um, when you actually encountered, like, the, you know, your, your, your guild mates, guys. Oh, yeah, like, you know, they're very helpful guild mates over there. Like, they've, they've been such a long time since that happened, so... Bringing players back up to date with that and giving them some context is always a good idea, particularly leading up to the new expansion. Because I imagine that Arena is seeing quite a lot of people come back to the game right now. It's like, oh wow, Guild Wars Two's got an expansion. It's time to, it's time to boot up the game. Yeah. Oh, and about that, okay. Like, we haven't we haven't actually talked about the balance match that much. I, I think a lot of that has been. I don't think it really needs to be said at this point, to be honest, right? Like, you know, go watch my other video on it, right? Like, it was a weird patch and not that much happened. But, you know, at least Condi Renegade will bench 45k now. So if you're a Condi Renegade main, you're pretty happy, I guess. They need to do a better job, though, of advertising these Season 2 and Season 3 coming back and the, the drive for why you would want to come back and experience that. Like, um, they need to promote it, like which they won't do. Which they won't do, but they yeah. need to promote that. Yeah, I, I, I hope they do, right? I mean, there'll be a blog post, you know? Like, is, is it what more do you want? Inks? I don't know. I'm not a marketing <laughs> person, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a more kind of chill chill time i think in terms of marketing they'll probably like go for a bit of a frenzy later on but yeah, i think it would be super cool if they did a lot of little like a uh, lot of little marketing things about like well, oh, unfortunately you know, like into the game. covid still and not having um this even for end of dragons right they won't have access to conventions yeah kind of sucks right aren't, aren't most of the conventions still canceled or yeah whatever? There's like some, there's like a, for example, like Gamescom is like the big one in, in Europe for sure, right? Like it's like a hybrid event. So they're letting some people in, but it's also semi-virtual. So it's half virtual, half real. So yeah. some people are allowed, but not everyone's allowed. Um, so I think the the timing on doing like big live presentations is very awkward for Ain't It. Like I don't think there's it's going to be that feasible or, or, or not feasible to the same degree that it would have been in a non-rona time that's for sure so unfortunately that hurts them um tough it's tough to release a game without proper exposure yeah i i, I think the internet has a lot of access to there as well right i mean like you know i, I think we're talking about like Guild wars 2 like it's some like small three-person indie studio like developing in their mom's garage you know what i mean like that's just not that's not how it is right like for, for what it's worth right, but, it but is what actually is, it is still like a you know it, it's is still a pretty, you know, well-known studio, right? I, I think that, I think people will go, oh, a Guild Wars 2 expansion. I, huh, how about that? I thought that game was dead, right? Um, so I, I think that, you know, they're, they're rep they do still do have like a presence in the industry to an extent. I, I think they are known. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they, they're marketing, you know, and like how, how they hype up their games, maybe a little bit unconventional but I, I think people do like have this like dim awareness of guild wars 2 like off the bat <laughs> that's how it feels with how popular it is on yeah Twitch. i don't know i, I suppose <laughs> yeah. so i suppose so but I, like you said earlier people have a preconceived notion of what guild wars 2 is from back from core like there'll be people who don't even know that it had two expansions nevertheless a third one and uh, so I don't, clear. I don't know if you can reach those people, but a convention definitely helps in that sort of thing. Yeah, it it certainly does, right? It, it's always good to have like this these big ones. They're very exciting, right? You know, you you've got everyone there. Like you're having a lot of people who don't know about your game necessarily. So it is always good to kind of hype that stuff up there. But it's, I mean, actually, speaking of of just 
the the people who go to conventions in general and wait in line for hours, maybe it would be a good thing. Just uh, get in there, super spread it around. Oh wow! And uh, eliminate those people. New condition. Have everyone, have everyone arrive in a taxi cab filled with sea creatures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, very, very nice, guys. Very, I just very nice. Say, someone earlier said the taxi cab was the worst thing they had ever seen related to Guild Wars 2. And in well, fact, they haven't been watching. <laughs> I think the worst thing I've ever seen related to Guild Wars 2 was that break bars that, that expose not as 30% power damage and 100% on condition damage. I think that's the worst thing I've ever seen. Wow. Yeah, I mean that that's it's a it's an interesting change. It is an interesting change, is what it is. I will say that. Questionable to say the very, very least indeed. Uh with regards people to people in chat are talking about Twitch drops as well. And I agree with all you guys. I, I think Twitch drops would be an amazing addition to Guild Wars 2. Um to like advertise it a bit. But they're not Arena that's not gonna do it. They just I don't, don't see understand. How, uh, honestly i i feel like i don't really see that anymore because because if you're not playing the game what 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 difference would it really make nobody's really gonna watch it like it would really yes just be no. a campaign to promote to promote streamers of the game but it wouldn't draw in anyone new would it oh no i oh, oh if, i, oh, if, I if definitely you're giving away if you're giving away not, bank not slots new players or you're right no, like I, I, yeah, I, no, like, I, I don't even agree with that. I actually think that's not true. Let, uh, let me debate you, okay? Like, I, yeah, I think Twitch me, actually because Twi I want the, I want the good insight on yeah. why oh. Twitch drops would make sense for Guild Wars. 2, oh, because Twitch drops. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry, no, I thought you just meant like Twitch. Twitch drops. Twitch drops is basically just legal view botting, right? Like it gets your game up in the directory, which does yeah. draw in new players. Like it's just legal view botting. That's literally what it is. Um, so it would be like a decent investment, I think, because it would just like, oh, like, holy shit, like, Guild Wars 2 has viewers now? Like, I think you would get people attracted to that. But like, Twitch in general, like, having your game be high up on Twitch, in my opinion, is insanely valuable. Like, if you look at, like, the Steam graph, I think this is a very different game, but I think the same logic applies. If you look at the Steam graph for Among Us, right? Dude, they were going to shut the game down, right, before it, like, blew up on Twitch. Like, they were, they, yeah. they, they said, like, Among Us is end of life. Right, like the game is over, right? We're gonna just stop developing, let's let it go. Like it was a fun little project, right? Fun times, you know, very suspicious. But then people started playing it and like blew up on YouTube, on Twitch. And like the game, like actually just got hard carried, right? By Twitch, right? And I would actually argue that Apex, Apex Legends and Valheim are two other examples of this. Like they were hard carried by, um, by content creation. That's not to say they're bad but, games. I actually think Apex yeah. and Valheim in particular are actually really well executed concepts. So, you know, you, you know, it's a good video game, and it had this massive Twitch presence, so that obviously helped. I think, you know, for what it's worth, I do think Guild Wars 2 is a good game, right? So it's, uh, you know, it's uh, it's got the good game thing. How, how, ma how many people in chat are here because uh, Asmund Gold promoted the game for, <laughs> for a split second? Like, on, uh, like honestly, <laughs> speak, up in, speak up in chat, please. I am if, you're, if you're here because of Dude, Asmund Gold or like, any, any like... other huge streamer that actually promoted the game and gave it a buzz. Because I genuinely do not believe that the that the influx of that momentarily as it was. Did, I mean, did, did you did you not see I the game when the I don't believe you guys. <laughs> did, did you not did you not see like a few people like came to play because of um of Summit though? Like a lot of people well, came. Like a few uh, people. It was it was kind of a lot though, right? They're kind of okay, they're kind of okay. gone now, but I mean, Fair enough. yeah. And people yeah. are saying lazy. <laughs> Sorry, uh, some yeah, people are saying lazy beyond. <laughs> Lazy peon, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, but he he did a valiant effort, but that was across YouTube as well, and like multiple weeks of trying sure. this out, and then like defaulting to actually fucking hating it. I, I and I'm I'm exaggerating it, but yeah, he, that didn't yeah. really pan out that well, did it? <laughs> yeah. Then everyone, everyone saying it, was right. he was he baked somewhere else? I thought he started with Guild Wars. No, he started with Guild Wars. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I, wait. No, I don't but no, no, no. I well, I mean, no, no, no. Yeah, I mean, that's not that's not a good example because obviously, you know, he he's really within the game, right? Um, but yeah, yeah. no, like a hundred percent. You know, um, I think like having like a really big Twitch presence is is big, right? Like if if like if Crip hadn't been perma banned from the game, like a lot of his viewers would have played the game, right? Like, and yeah, you could argue it's a little bit temporary, but isn't 
every player temporary to an extent, right? Like, you know, like the amount of people yeah, who have I mean, played yeah, through the okay. entirety of Guild Wars 2, you know, like, you know, like in the same way, you, you can say, oh, yeah, yeah, like people who play because of a streamer or because of like some Twitch thing, but they're not going to play forever. Well, the people who like saw the original World of Warcraft cinematic were like, holy shit, this is the best thing ever, right? They're not going to play forever, right? There are a few people who do, but I would also argue that there are a few people who will play because of, say, a YouTube video, like from Angry Joe or Total Biscuit, right? and go like, holy shit, it's a good game, right? And they actually just, they do stay like for a long period of time. So I, 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 I do agree with you. I, I think that um, it's not like the be on it's not necessary. I don't think Arena, like n no game needs Twitch, right? Like, you know, it, for, I think the the really good counter example here is that, well, that this was the case a while, but I don't, I, it probably isn't the case now, right? But if you look at something like The Sims, like The Sims was like an incredibly popular, like massive um series and it just never really had it's never had like this crazy buzz around it, right like people just like the sims right and with mobile games now like do you have people like streaming raid shadow legends like no uh, not really no oh did you have people like streaming like afk arena or like temple run to be fair did temple run good game by the way okay that is actually <laughs> a quality game just gonna say it but like are people streaming these things like no like um that they aren't like, you don't need to have this but i think it's definitely a one right where you can go um, and, you know, weirdly enough, a lot, you know, this is like, I, I want to talk about this at some point, like either on stream or on video, but a lot of people say that Guild Wars 2 is a really bad game to stream. I, I actually couldn't disagree more with that. Like, you know, like I, I think if you compare this game to something like World of Warcraft, like World of Warcraft is like, holy shit, you've got like a billion UI components going on there. You've got significantly more downtime um, than in Guild Wars 2 if you, if you kind of play around Guild Wars 2 correctly, right? There's a lot going on. Um, in Guild Wars, so you can always have a lot of action going on there as well. I think, like, from an outside perspective, something like WoW is like, holy shit, what the fuck is going on here, right? Um, you know, it's a lot less animation driven as well. Like, you know, in, in Guild Wars 2, like, the, the boss is, like, very well telegraphed a lot of the time. They're, like, really big. It's kind of obvious what they're doing, like, when they're doing, like, a power move. And same I think in, they're talking about yeah. PvP, though, when they say that, right? Or are they but talking about PvP? Even, even, in, even, I mean, I think they talk about both, right? But even if you talk okay. about, I, I would, dude, I would even go as far to say, even go as far to say, right, that world versus world is actually surprisingly viewable from a from a player perspective, right? Like you've got players like charging at each other, like smashing into each other, right? Like spectating it, like from a GVG perspective, I think it's actually kind of hard because it's like hard to see what's actually like going on internally. But if you're like if you're watching a if you're watching a player in a Zerg, right, and you're listening to the commander. I think you can actually kind of get a pretty good idea, right, of, of what's what's happening now. I think Guild Wars 2 does this surprisingly well. I don't think it gets credit for being surprisingly understandable and, and simple uh, and, and streamlined there in, in that regard, actually. But yeah, it is like very explosive. Oh, but still, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I think it's a good game for Twitch. I think it's a, a really good game to, to, uh, to have like a Twitch presence. I think it, it, in a way it was semi-designed for that. Um, but there you go. I've, I actually, w w one thing that example has been brought up actually. Yeah, Zandri is actually a great example of like um uh, someone like luring over an audience. Like she was playing Final Fantasy. She was like uh, big in Final Fantasy. She's now lured her viewers. They've been corrupted by Guild Wars Two. Now they all belong to us, Dora. They've uh, been trapped in Guild Wars Two forever. There's no escape. Hell yeah. <laughs> this game's all about getting trapped and not having an escape. Oh wow. I like yeah. getting trapped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to go look at his Twitter. <laughs> oh, it's so true. Oh man, that was a low blow, Inks. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, we we have uh, got a little bit off topic. Did, did did we miss anything? By the way, I feel like we've we've kind of we've kind of gone a pretty good distance here, right? Like with regards to uh, with all this stuff. Like I think we're uh, you know we talked about everything. Is there anything we missed out? We could talk about the, the balance patch a little bit, but the balance patch, in my opinion, like there's not really that much to say, and I don't think we you know we don't need to get into it here. What do you like, what do you think the legendary amulet is going to look like? Do you think it's going to be yeah? I mean, oh. but it'll it'll be it'll have a bad effect, like the will, it, will it be uh will it be an expansion to all the other PVE oriented uh, legendaries, or will it be just dragon themed? Uh, multicolored i don't know orene prism because i could kind of see that thematic coming um hmm. yeah i don't know though we'll don't make know. crystals no, come out of you yeah maybe well, it is linked to living world right and the ice brood song yeah. so that i love i'd love for them to continue the... yeah i feel like it what, might what it might be a I continuation like vision aurora coalescence right like continue that yes line. thank you yeah 
I, I think it Do would I mean, make that would, sense that would be if they kinda did. Cool. Yeah, for like you know, I mean, to be fair, that that's got that's got a fair bit of you know, to a certain extent, prestige there as well. Like, if you've actually got like yeah. all four of those, and you you know, you've been about, you know what I mean? Like, you you've you know, you've done some shit. And it's, if you got all, of and them. it's like all the other all the other ones are uh, tied to the living story or raids mm. and whatnot. Now now they're doing a whole whole thematic. All the seasons come together now. Let's finish this off with with one big bang. I can kind of see that. Uh, I kind of see that happen. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, I guess that's the the, the option. Uh, the other option is, is it's a standalone, which again is not totally impossible. Yeah, because of course they they be they've added these right. They added the um, PvP and World versus World legendary trinkets, yeah, which have their own effect. Yeah, fun fluff. Yeah, ooh, yeah, which are just they're kind of going on them. They just do their own thing uh, as opposed to directly linking it to anything else. So there is that possibility yeah, that that could happen. Every everyone who's gonna replace uh, transcendence with the new amulet are just now going to have one blob hanging out on the side. Yeah, one blob. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, uh, that's gonna yep. be great. You you you, you put you <laughs> so put, you put, you put you put doubt in my mind, Dero. Like previously, I was like it's gonna be standalone, but now you've made me think like, huh? Maybe they will do a, a you know a quadruple legendary chain. So I was like, no, I, I think it's going to be like a, a different thing, or maybe even have no effect, right? Okay, seriously, like you want you know my my actual like you know uh, my Duma take. I was like, it's just it's just gonna, it's just, it's just going to be a legendary, right? Like just legendary and no effect was what I was thinking. But I, I guess it'll have a standalone yeah, effect. I, but but we already, I mean, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but we we basically already got the precursor, right? The sagas and draconic hmm. core, yeah, which is uh, which has the effect of the the. The DRMs Red and the blue blue arm, the DRM buffs permanently showing. I think it's just going to be an extension of that. It's going to be the dragon magic all coming together, doing something cool in a flashy crystalline uh, prism or whatever the fuck. It's probably, yeah, honestly, it's probably going to be a prism above your head in the end. Or just footsteps would be cool. If it was just footsteps, I'd be totally down with that. Yeah, but we already have crystalline uh, footsteps. From what? The, can, uh, can we have farting? Uh, what's can I just fart your crystals? <laughs> nice. Yeah, but Eureka, 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 Eureka sucks and you're the only one that has it. Yeah, it's great though. <laughs> <laughs> the only player in the game. The so only say, player in the game. No, I would totally... So here's my thing. Here's my thing. I would totally make Eureka if we had Mace Pistol Thief. Because oh, I would want to load... It... <laughs> Eureka into hope and shoot it out. That would be so fucking cool. That is an old it's meme. Coming, don't worry. That is a that very is old meme. meme. That, that I mean, wow. Cool. You know what? You know what's in a way like a little it. bit sad, right? There are I can not hold, that I'll many hold people. Out hope for that. Yeah. Mace pistol. There are not that many people who will even remember the days of where we would talk about mace pistol thief before Ooh. every elite specialization preview, right? I, I've been waiting for mace pistol thief since forever. Yeah, it I mean that's happen. true. I mean that is true. Yeah, that definitely is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, like a few people, there's a few dim remembrances uh, here in the chat of that, uh, of all that good epic arc there as well. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, now that you mention it, I think it is kind of obvious, right? Like it would just be based around the DRM stuff. So maybe it would be like a separate effect. Yeah. Maybe, ha we're going to get, ha we've got orbs floating, we've got orbs above us, orbs behind us, right? And now we get orbs on our arms, right? Your hands turn into orbs. Very orbs nice. Orbs everywhere. We yeah. Just, yeah, the character just turns into an orb. Orbs everywhere equals bubbles. Do you think they're finally going to add um, the ability to hide the effects of Aurora Vision no. and Coalescence? That would be nice. Wait, you don't think they're going to do so. that? Wait, you think I won't? Because no. you guys know that if they don't they're do never, that, I can never, never use them, right? Yeah. If they never do that, you, that means yeah. I, I can't use Legendary Armor. It's, 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 I'm literally hardlocked because I don't want to use Aurora or Vision or yeah. Coalescence. I don't like them. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. want that on my said, character. Why I do I have to same, Why does it have to be there? thing a long time ago, and then uh, ne nothing ever showed for years. And You gave in. Yeah. It, I mean, it it might come with uh, the legendary armory. I doubt it because it's I don't know, I don't I got I doubt it. I really really doubt it. Wow, it's never gonna come. I I've, I don't know. You can you can tell I've completely Maybe. lost faith in that quality of life feature. Wow, I, I really have. Yeah, I mean look, it, you know, I mean look, is is it time? I think you need to take up Brazil's mantle and make part five. I believe I think is what you need to do. <laughs> you need to make part Dude. five. Yeah, there's one circumstance in which I I make part five. There's one circumstance. It could possibly happen. We'll see. What when? What's the? 
And what's the circumstance that part five if, would be enabled? If people in stream fucking buy my artwork, I'll make part five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> buy my NFTs and order prints, and I will make part five when Legendary Armory comes how many, out. How many sales do you need for Get part a five? Swag hat, a little, like a, I don't, I don't like care. <laughs> I kind of want to make we'll part the, five. It's just a meme, but I don't know. Link the store. So, okay, I got you. Here's my question: Where is my alliances? Oh yeah, ah, they're, they're not mentioned. They're even completely left I out of the forgot. equation. Yeah, even I forgot about this, and I forgot to talk about it when I was doing my review of the of the notes as well, actually. And yeah, you're absolutely right, Inks. Like conspicuously absent, right? Like it's very it's conspicuous. Yeah. They're they're distracting you with fancy shiny new colors. I mean, well, it's and, not working. Uh, and and the the old cool thing is left on the floor and forgotten. Either I mean, either that or it's going to be the main feature of uh, the expansion, which I doubt. But hey, who knows? So armory, right? Yeah. Armory is coming before the expansion, and they yes. put that in their roadmap. Okay. Now okay. they did not post right about alliances there. I mean, this implies to me that it will be either with the expansion or after, right? Um, or not I, at all. I, I, no, there, there is I, that third option. No, <laughs> there is no, there is no way they aren't eventually going to make alliances. Are you kidding me? Like, there's no way they would, they would, um, they would troll that hard, right? Right? I right? don't think they'll do it. Weren't they, 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 they trying they to hire World vs. World people recently? Um, well, like, no, not, not exactly. Like, John Corpening came back, but he's not on World vs. World this time. He's, like, server. He, he's, like, he server. He failed World vs. World anyway, so that's fine. Wait, what? Whoa, wait, wait, what, what's the story behind that? Well, he was on the World vs. World team at one point, right? He, yeah, he was, like, competitive, yeah. And it's still shit, so <laughs> failure. I mean... Damn, wow. Sorry. Holy <laughs> shit. Dude, NCSoft inks over here. God damn, dude. What the fuck? That was a. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't feel too Sorry. good about that low blow there. Is it a low blow? I apologize if it's a low blow, but they were, and it's not just John Corbinning. It's lots of people have come through the World vs. World grinder over the years. It literally grinds employees up, and they come out little spaghetti at the end, and uh, they go to another company. There you go. Any, anyhow, boys, I feel like we're. Uh, Yes, we're we're in a pre to a natural conclusion, and uh, yes. I'm, I'm I'm I gotta run. Yes, hundred oh, percent. So I think that is a good play. That's a, yeah, that's definitely a fucking good, yeah. Before like before um, Brazil gets double unpartnered, uh, and <laughs> the rest of us yeah. get unpartnered. Dude, I'm I'm yeah. using my real name. Please don't fucking sue me, lol. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like hopefully we don't get like like mega destroyed. But you know what? I don't think that. I, to be fair, I don't think that's that, that bad, right? It's all like just memes, anyway, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's all, all silly stuff. But anyway, I think that's a good place to wrap things up here uh, as well. I think we've talked about just about everything that the game has possibly been ha has been going on, at least for the uh, the recent news there as well. So yeah, it's time to do one of our favorite parts, guys, of tea time: the introductions, where we <laughs> uh, brace ourselves for the YouTube comments, and of course tell you how brilliant we all are so let's go ahead and uh, you know let's get the let's get the returning gamers uh, rolling on first here of course deroya back in play yeah. here right returning to guild wars 2 daily streams and content creation very shortly i believe tell us about that well damn that was a. Uh, <clears throat> i feel like i don't want to crush everyone's dream now uh, but yes, that is totally going to happen. Teapot is uh, telling the truth. I will definitely be starting streaming from uh, <clears throat> tomorrow. Yes, that is no lie. No, jokes, jokes aside. Um, I am. Um, um, that is not. That is not the the plan, so to speak. Uh, and I feel. But I feel like I've said uh, so many. Uh, so many uh, potentially hurtful things to people that uh, I don't want to. I don't want to dox myself like uh, like Brazil did. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. So maybe I should just leave it there. <laughs> just continue to be a rando asshat. I'll just continue to be a rando asshat in your guys' right. your guys' advice, okay. and I like that. And then, all right. So then, moving on. Then, okay. It's been a pretty long while he evacuated the guild wars 2 scene and honestly 
has become, you know, he started out, guys, at the beginning of tea time, the beginning of his YouTube career, you know, two YouTube channels later, right, through a podcast of his own of Salvage Kit, right? Inks has gone from, uh, you know, a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, happy PMA content creator to the saltiest dog ever, releasing two roast videos of ArenaNet, actually, uh, very recently. And Inks... <laughs> Are you making your return? Are you on your way back? Like, are you are you here to basically be New Brazil? New Brazil. Um, so I'll be around for. I mean, I have, I have some content planned for a little while. Oh. I, I would like to do a couple of videos a week if there's if there's um, something to talk about. Anyway, it might not all be Guild Wars Two stuff, to be quite honest. But uh, yeah, there'll be some Guild Wars Two videos coming out on the old YouTube channel there. And uh, go buy Brazil stuff. Support Brazil. <laughs> That's a very, very fine statement there as well. And of course, definitely excited to see Inks back and play. I want to see some Ink streams. You know, this is one thing that I see about you, Inks, okay? Like in your videos, like, you know, you can be, you know, you, you spit fire, right? But, you know, like there's often like a little bit extra with the stream, right? Like, you know, like the stream, it causes you to unleash, right? The stream activates you in a way, right? You see the chat and you just want to start trolling them uh, or to start going crazy. <laughs> And you know what? I like that, right? So you've got to get back into play there as well, I think. And of course, now, okay, we actually have, uh, you know, of course, we've been referring to Brazil by the name that you guys will probably know yeah. him by, right? But that is, in fact, kind of, uh, I suppose we could even say at the, the end of an era of Brazil, uh, to an extent on this, because uh, there is a very new... Uh, side of your existence online and of course well more so in the real life i suppose no actually uh that you are looking to share with us i believe like when you tell us a little bit about that yeah for sure um so i basically got so unhappy with guild wars 2 that i just quit playing the game and bought a camera and went outside and started taking pictures and i was like you know what fuck i could you know anyways i didn't want to become a hot tub streamer we'll just leave it at that yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah i've been up to that i've been doing photography art um it's been a cool journey so far but now i'm kind of like at a place where i feel confident about my stuff to show it off and previously i had been really afraid about you know telling people my real name and about information about me but i kind of had this big moment of realization like i think it would be cool for people to see that I have more value as a human than just as someone who was constantly mad at arena net, because that's literally like what my whole personality was my whole online presence was just like shit talking a game. And I decided that like, I'd rather, you know, people know that I actually do other shit. So yeah, my name is Preston. Hi, nice to see you all. Um, I'll link my website in chat again for like the, it's been in there a couple times, but that's my website, underworldvideo.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram. It's just at UWB underscore Preston. Um, if you want to buy prints or check out any of my work, um, I've got a print shop located on the website. You can buy stuff there. If you're into NFT and cryptocurrency, you can buy my fucking NFTs. Um, I've got more stuff cooking in the kitchen. Um, I'll just leave it at that, but it's going to be cool. And if people fucking buy my NFTs, I'll make Legendary Armor Part 5. Yeah. Yeah. buy nfts <laughs> i'll make legendary armor part five do it dude yeah. i am i am almost considering how much was it for all, all 30 100 bucks what do you mean or, to, to buy how, no they're how like many uh, how many nft how many nfts would i have to buy for you to to do part five just one just one if someone just literally one. buys one nft i'll like i'll be happy dude, you know? I'm <laughs> going there right now Dude, incoming sale. Give Here me, we give go. Give me your Ethereum. Give me all of your Ethereum. Wow. Hand it all over, guys. <laughs> Brazil is the crypto god, right? He's off the grid be. with his money. Like, He's on the grid with his real name. Here's like some, some real talk. Like, um, we'll, we'll get into real life shit a little bit, I guess. So, um, one of the things that like I'm really interested in doing and really do like doing is like, I want to be an art millionaire like hell yeah like Ooh. i'll just be honest with I you like i it. want to fucking make art and like do that for a living but something else that i do and like spend a good amount of time on is i like to go out and hang out with homeless people and walk around and talk to them meet them learn about them take portraits of them 
because like it's cool to be able to complain and get mad about a video game and when you realize that like you have a life that lets you do that then it's kind of rough when you see people that sleep in the middle of the street and they don't have food to eat for a week it's a uh, pretty eye-opening so that's like part of what i want to do with like you know art sales like i want to be able to have the funding to go out spend time spend my own money um that i make from doing what i love to do um helping out with that and just talking to people buying them some food here and there buying them fucking shoes and socks because literally there are people that don't have that um, it's pretty rough so that um, yeah it's a beautiful thing know. it is a fantastic cool. cause and indeed if you, if you don't care about homeless people i'll make part five of legendary armor so wait wait <laughs> wait if you don't care if wait you, you don't, don't care, care yeah. wait if what you don't like some people don't have feelings and don't give a shit that's you know that's why the problem is there in the first place if you need the other bait whatever fucking legendary armor part five but that's what i'm up to that's what i'm doing with my life well there you go that is quite the uh quite the pitch they're quite the information the window into the life of Brazil, or of course, Underworld Video Preston there as well. And of course, we'll be seeing more of him lurking around, I am sure, giving us his commentary. And hey, I'm sure there's plenty of spots open in the creative partner program. So you can kind of go in there for a different angle, see if they don't remember you, right? Like, see so if you can kind of sneak in there. Because I think you, well, you used a different name for the regular partner program. Therefore, right, they won't know, okay? They'll have no idea. You're able to like sneak in there, no yeah, problem. Sneak right? in. So yeah, you're good to go on that. Uh, and then, well, I guess that kind of brings it all the way. Uh... Could, I, could, I, could I clear something up, actually, real oh, fast? Yeah. yeah, sure. Someone said that they don't agree with... I will be honest, I don't agree with the practice of exploiting homeless people to make money. Um, I don't think what I'm doing is exploiting homeless people because I go out and I, like, spend my day out there, like, talk with them, treat them like a human, try to learn about them, try to give them stuff if i can if i'm able to and like i'm not just trying to like take their picture and get fucking rich and be woke like i go out there and spend my time so i don't think it's exploitive but if you do then maybe we have different opinions on it i just wanted to say that since it came up but well there you go we like to see it guys but anyway there is the uh there is the conclusion to the tea time so all that remains to be said is thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you like this sort of thing, I'll actually try and get a few more of these guys. You know, I, I do miss tea time, actually. It's one of the things that I have fair. wanted it to... A, it was a pleasure. Yeah. Oh, it, was no, fun. It, it always it was is. You know, I'm back talking about yeah. everything. And, you know, I, I actually do want, to, I do want to definitely give like a special shout out there to uh, Deroya Inks and, of course, uh, Brazil Preston here. Um... For actually, you know, agreeing to come back on the show. Like, you know, obviously, Deroy, you've been out uh, for a while. Inks also in a similar situation there. Brazil has been lurking around here, right? Like, you know, he, he, he's never truly gone, right? Like, he's always in the shadows, right? In some in some secret discords there, like, you know, like uh, investigating what's going on. But I really appreciate you guys coming back um, to have a chat. You know, I have, you know, I, I will say this, guys. You know, like, you know, at the end of the show, we can, you know, get a little, little bit sappy here. But, you know, I've, I've genuinely missed it. I've really enjoyed, I really enjoyed Tea Time. It was say... a really big thing that I had a good time and awesome. yeah. I picked a better GPU out of the garbage than Teapot owns. True. <laughs> Actually true, unfortunately. Like, you know, that's, that like, hurts things. Okay. Like, really? why, why, my, yeah, uh, my, I, my, I garbage picked an 8700K and a 2060 out of the garbage and all I had to do is fix the motherboard. Yeah. Or and replace my, the motherboard. My 2080 Ti died, yeah, Droya. Nice. It's dead. My GPU died. So I have a scuffed well, 1060 right now. Join the rest of us. I'm getting a 3060 next Friday. Oh, Monday, yeah. Actually, I think. Damn. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. still rocking this 1080. Maybe. The 1080 was the best card they ever made. Yeah. I'm going to try Pretty and get this one. done. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for coming, showing up to the stream there. It's always a pleasure. And I think you'll see a little bit more from Tea Time as well. Like, if you guys like this sort of thing, then follow or subscribe, or, or both, depending where you are. If you're on YouTube, you want to go ahead and subscribe. If you're on Twitch, you want to follow and subscribe. If for some reason you're on Twitter, you can go ahead and follow there as well, because I know I do a whole bunch, you know, I do some tweets, guys, right? Like, you follow know, hearts. I'm up to definitely, Heart and definitely. Okay. Indeed, do that, my friends. Follow at Hardstuck Guild there. Join my guild, guys. Excellent. If you want Discord in the chat. But that is just about it. 
for this tea time. Uh, and we'll, of course, we will see you guys a little bit later. I will continue streaming because, you know, like, I have no life whatsoever. Unlike Brazil at this point, and everyone else here, apparently. I, I've been left behind in that regard, that's for sure. But, okay, that is all for the tea time and for the podcast. We'll see you in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the, the show and in the midst. Okay, that, like, see, he's ordered, derided. Right he's coming to. back. He's back, I man. He's back. Did it this yeah. Time. <laughs> uh, yeah, he got you. He did, he did get you there, dude. He, he actually outpaced you there. So, yeah, like, he's already got, like, he's already got, right, the catchphrase, getting back into it. Like, can we get, like, an MMO Inks, like, snap to, like, and, like stop, stop the stream there as well? Like, in the mist and with the, 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 the finger snap there as well. And then, boom done we cut it there right love it. there it is